Oh, there we are. Oh, baby. I was wondering yeah. why the screen was black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my fault. Shit. Rip. Um. All right, Scott, your show. All right, welcome to another episode of Digital Beatdown. I am uh, one of your hosts, Scott. Uh, with me, as always, is Miss. Are you sure you didn't sound too sure about that? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking up. I'm like looking over at my the notes, host. and I'm like, "What's my name? What is my name? <laughs> <laughs> like, is it Scott? Is it Julie? Just go with your what gut. I, Forget the notes. <laughs> Scott, Scott, you're not supposed to uh, mistake yourself for Zach. That's Max job. <laughs> I literally, I have like a nameplate like right behind me. I should just look behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so I'm it. Scott. With me is Mist, as always. Yes. Hi. And we got Mac here, not yeah, fighting here. tonight. No, I'm not fighting. I'm I'm uh, I'm modding. I'm I'm not fighting. Yeah. You're dying. <laughs> You're dying. Yes. yes. Uh, Mac is no, dying. No, 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 no. Mac, Mac is By the end of tonight's dying. fight, Mac Mac will be dead. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Well, watch watch our episode of Visit Robin on John dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug, very nice plug. <laughs> nice, nice, uh, nice plug of an episode that came out like a year ago. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, fighting tonight, we've got Eric, y'all, and Bryce. How you guys feeling? Also tonight? known What's as and partner? And Shaggy. What's happening, partner? Uh, also, we have one more person coming in. <laughs> Yeah, and the other version of Mustachio. Me. Yeah, the other me. <laughs> My gosh. We're we're doing we're starting off real well. <laughs> the oh other me what was was a B tier original Disney Disney Channel original movie. <laughs> well, to be fair, the first time I ever did this show with Scott, he did actually call me Mustachio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did do that. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm here. It's good to be here. I don't know what's happening with my video, but I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> uh, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> At least I'm here. I made it. Oh, oh, <laughs> You can you can figure it out, which is a '90s Nick show that we are not talking about today. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a show. Figure it out. Once figure again, it out. I just want to I want to point this out here. When I made some questions, I did not. I made this like at the beginning of the year. I had no idea that that stuff that was going to be on Max was going to air. I had oh, no right. idea. Uh, yeah. This, this is in no relation to what's going on with Nickelodeon no, right no, now. This has nothing to do. Oh my gosh, you know what would help? If I plugged my camera in. <laughs> yeah. 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 She, she, she covered for us. <laughs> in order to Stepping it up. Production oh. level. Stepped probably up. should start the show. Yeah, we're <laughs> yes, probably. The show. Are we all there? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, no, we're, we're not here. all there. <laughs> we're definitely we not all there. But we're all here. That. Okay. So there's going to be five questions. Each question is broken up into five phases. Uh, we got the introduction where you state your answers. Uh, then we get phase two, the declaration, where you tell us, where you go for a minute, you tell us what your answer is, why it's the best. Uh, phase three, that's the digital beatdown. You know, that's where you guys fight it out for three and a half minutes. And phase four is our last minute round. You get another minute. We'll either throw you a question or uh, give you a last minute chance to fight it out again. And then phase five is the cleanup. You and back judgment. check and give cleanup. and judge. judge judgment. Judgment is coming <laughs> for all of you. Judgment day. Yeah, Scooby Doo <laughs> is going to judge you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so are we ready to get this started? Yeah, we're ready. Whenever you are, whenever you say first question, I'm ready. All right, first question. We are going to start with Eric. What is the uh, the first question? What is the best no, I mean, Spielberg? Yeah. Bit? Okay, I was. <laughs> <laughs> we got three hands on the wheel. Shall, Shall I try this again? Me? Do your thing. <laughs> what is the best Steven Spielberg film? I went with Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
account. I got your, I got your answer for, for, the, for the first time. I have answers. There you are. There you are, bitches. I have answers. <laughs> I, was, I nice, just wanted to dude. give Mac the time to get it all ready. Upgrade, yeah. I'll wait until my name's called. All right. All right, Bryce. Best Spielberg movie. Extra t- terrestrial, a.k.a. E.T. For some reason, they just like say X-rated terrestrial. <laughs> I stuck extra testicle, uh, extra terrestrial, extra, extra, extra testicle. <laughs> Sorry, it's a diff- very different movie. Dyslexic. <laughs> These glasses. Oh, I almost broke something. Nice. Okay, uh, Eric, are you ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am ready. We to got go. the. Miss, do we have the clock ready? Yes, we do. All right. Go. To go. Right. <clears throat> so Raiders of the Lost Ark, a.k.a. the first Indiana Jones movie, is the best uh, Steven Spielberg movie because it is just a fantastic movie. It is a period piece of just this archaeologist who is racing against Nazis, not Nazis, Nazis, uh to find the ark of the covenant and just throughout this you 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 get acquainted with uh probably cinema's one of cinema's most iconic action heroes in indiana jones uh it is just a, a delight from start to finish just this amazing movie amazing character uh like one of the few things is like the best way to show that you have a very uh, iconic character is that you can tell who it is just by their silhouettes, and you can absolutely 100% tell who Indiana Jones is based off his silhouette. And... Stop. Oh. That was a minute on the clock. Yeah, time moves, time moves fast. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. Bryce, uh, are you ready? Uh, I think you're muted. Yes, I am ready and unmuted. See, I should have started the clock right there. That's fine. <laughs> yes, anytime I'm ready. And <laughs> go. Okay. E.T., the greatest Spielberg movie. Um, it's just a classic. We all know it. We all love it. We've all seen it. Um, I mean, even down to the classic scene of E.T. on the bicycle basket flying in, in front of the moon. You know that silhouette. That's the silhouette you see at the start of every movie is that, well, I can't remember the name of the company, but when you see it just take off in front and you see the boy on the bicycle with E.T. in the basket in front of the moon, you know you're in for a good movie because that's from E.T. And we all know E.T. was a great movie. Um, This movie is just deep and aware on so many levels for the time it came out. Um, It just really made you think it, it, kind of branched out your thought of what could be real. Um, You know, we all kind of had these ideas of aliens back then, but this kind of brought it more close to home and made it more of a reality, made it more relatable for something not to be scared of. They came... And stop. They do go quick, huh? Yeah, they do. (laughs) Well, you guys are going to have three and a half minutes to fight it out, so... Missed. Let him go when you're ready. All right, hold on. I'm going to get three and a half minutes. Hold on. Here we go. All right, you ready, Mac? Because it sounds like you say you needed something. Oh, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. Go ahead. Go, go. <sighs> go. All right, so one thing I want to say about E.T., it's got probably some of the most classic one-liners um, compared to Raiders of the Lost Ark or any any, any Indiana Jones movie, um, we've got the E.T. phone home. We've got, you know, just all kinds of classic lines. We've got the silhouette, like you mentioned. Um, I found him. He belongs to me. Is he a pig? He sure eats like one. We've got plenty of classic lines, but also, like I was trying to get into, it puts you on a deeper level of thought. It op- and it's it's very family friendly. It's warm. It's heartfelt. It's got adventure, mystery, drama, suspense. You don't know what's going to happen. It's also it's also end. got a a terrible Atari game. Well, I mean, yes, but 
you know, fast forward to now, everybody wants to dig it up. So how terrible is it? You know, it's, yes, it's one of the worst, but we're not talking about the game. We're talking about the directing of Spielberg here. And Spielberg really gave, I think, a, the best performance, you know, out of all the people he could in this. Um, and E.T. was one and done. You know, obviously. I, I mean, there's a theme Indiana park Jones ride was, that would disagree with that. Indiana Jones was successful and they kept beating it into the ground with more and more sequels that nobody well, wanted but well, at a certain they, point. The, E.T. The was one and two, done. They were done. The first two sequels were also very well regarded. And then decades later, they decided to drudge it up. Well, that is and by they no were, fault. And they were both better than Raiders of the Lost Ark, in my opinion. So, I mean, you could have picked either one of those and had a better argument there. Um, just a lot of the jokes are corny. It's it's got that corny kind of feel. It just doesn't age well. Yeah, but you the know? corny the corny kind of feel is classic Spielberg. It is, and this it, it, it's classic of that era as well. But going back and looking on it now, it doesn't really hold up. Like E.T., it kind of ev evades a lot of that and keeps the the real drama and suspense involved. It's it feels real where Indiana Jones somehow feels more fantastical, more fantasy based than than E.T. Even though, you know, and Indiana Jones, he's just kinda, you know, he just kinda stumbles his way through shit. I mean, he's not like the best, you know, protagonist, I in my opinion. I think um like I said, the other ones are better. Kind of poor acting, poor jokes, doesn't age well, feels far fetched. Um whereas E.T. I mean, shit, E.T. inspired Stranger Things. We we all know that. We can see that. Like, Stranger Things is a is a huge E.T.-inspired series, and it was hugely successful. And it, it recreated that feeling that we got. Yeah, it's talk, talk about history. something that's being beat, to, beat like a dead horse. Yes. I mean, I haven't watched it past the first season. <laughs> but just saying, it's a huge cult. It's a huge success, and it's directly inspired by, by E.T., no doubt about that. It's trying to relive and recapture those. As moments. opposed to the thousands of things that are inspired by Indiana Jones. Yeah, but what really can you name that is such a pop culture hit right now that's inspired by Indiana Jones compared to like Stranger Things? Literally anything that has anything to do with archaeology. <laughs> just, I mean, just, I, I'm trying to think of what? Ancient Aliens? I mean, the, the, no. that's not <laughs> You said stop? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Ancient aliens, very nice. That's that kind of works into uh, Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, <laughs> uh, but we must. We must. Indeed. We don't talk yeah. about the first Indiana Jones movie I was able to see in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> we don't oh, talk man. about Shia LaBeouf swinging on the monkey with the monkeys. <laughs> oh man, you're hurting your argument. <laughs> right. I'm saying the things we don't. The time's talk about. over. Time's up. <laughs> Time's up, yeah. All right. Um, does anybody have a, a question for these guys? Oh, gosh, I'm really split. I can't think of a question. This is going to be messed up. All right. <laughs> I'll take messed up. You can thank Mac for this because I saw what he put um, in chat. Mac, you're muted. Dun, dun, dun. This is hard. This is hard. This is very tough. Okay. So, um... Go ahead. Not really more... It's not a question more than it is a uh, a request. <laughs> um... Put a Schindler's List spin on your movies. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I, okay. Okay. I easy. was gonna say Hook. easy. Was it Eric first? Honestly, easy. honestly, I think it's easy it's for both of you. Very easy. <laughs> <I'm> being <laughs> honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, God, you really are in the last episode, aren't you, Ben? No, right. I literally said it's something you said in chat, so you did it. Hey, right. all right, all right, all right. The Schindler's List twist of my movie is that his entire class from the beginning of the movie are all rescue Jews from from. Uh, that that have been Schindler's List into his class and saved from Nazi Germany. <laughs> so he's the Schindler. He's the Schindler. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. All right. Me? Yeah. Schindler's List spin on E.T. 
So I'm going to kind of go into an alternate uh, Hitler theory that I've heard where he was planning on, he, he was developing UFOs to plan a hoax invasion. I'm going to say that E.T. was the first, he was the scout, and he was the first of many to come after that for the, the, the Nazi invasion. Of you so, aliens, so, so he's Hold a Nazi on. false flag. Indeed. Did, uh. I'm sorry. Did, sorry. <laughs> did you just? Did you just in your pitch make ET a Nazi? <laughs> yes. In the, All right. This is a B T. I mean, if we're doing a similar is, split spin uh, on Nazi. it, why? The if fuck we're doing it? a similar split spin, then yeah. I mean, whatever. Why the fuck did it's cartridge sneaky. humanity get, get spilled not, into this? Right? <laughs> not the route I thought either of you were going to go yeah, down, but yeah. I'm interested in both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're on that one. All oh. right. Um, do, do we have any facts to be checked? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess I'll start with E.T. This one was I thought was kind of interesting. Most of the upper body puppetry was performed by a two foot, two, two, two foot ten inch tall stuntman, but the scene in the kitchen were done by a, but were done using a twelve year old boy who was born without legs but was an expert on walking on his hands. Oh <laughs> my God, that cannot be true. Is it true? Uh, it's not IMDb. Well, Wikipedia page to the oh, page holders from. Wow. No, it, IMDb. Uh, wow. That's the kind of thing that they would do in that era of making movies, so I, I believe it. it. Yeah, I mean, I believe it, but wow. That is so weird. That is Dave, the it's weirdest thing I've ever had answer for this. <laughs> Miss, I got something for um, um, Indiana Jones if you probably haven't got it yet. I, also, uh, no, I'll save it for later. Yeah, oh, I, I, I mean, I have stuff pulled up, but you can say yours. Um, Harrison Ter Ford was not originally cast for the role. It was going to go to Tom Selleck. For what? Oh, Indiana Jones. Indiana was Jones. going to be Indiana Jones. It was Magnum yeah. Pie himself. Mm -hmm. It was going to be Tom Selleck. <laughs> they were all, they wanted Tom Selleck. <laughs> they wanted Tom Selleck so badly, but I think what I, unless you can quote me on this. I think he had something else he had to do, and then Harrison Ford got the role. Was that correct? Because here, because Tom Selleck had the role. He was busy with Quigley Down Under. <laughs> it would have been funny if Don oh, Johnson. Oh, here's something. Ooh. It's funny if Don Johnson was up for the role. <laughs> hey, Eric, you're gonna like this one. Spielberg has said that he considers. It the most perfect film of the series. He never wanted to modify it or change anything about it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he just shoots. He just shoots that dude in that scene, <laughs> going all out. He's just like. <laughs> also, oh, fun fact about that one: Harrison Ford was really sick. He didn't want to shoot anymore, so he shot the guy and moved on with his life. <laughs> nice. He just, he did, yeah, that was a funny. Mo that was a funny moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was also a very real moment because he really was sick, didn't want to shoot anymore, and he wanted the scene to end, so that's why he did it. Yeah, he just went and got his end, and he was like, perfect. T <laughs> technically, one of the most iconic scenes of improv. Yes, Spielberg was like, perfect. <laughs> that. That's perfect. No, he's probably like, oh, I would have done it a few more times, but this asshole's going through his trailer. <laughs> David, I need my David, I'm sick and tired of doing this. I'm a bologna sandwich. Where's my gun? <laughs> uh, Miss, do we have any other facts? Oh, there's a bunch of them, but for the sake of keeping this under two hours. <laughs> <laughs> More facts well, about the arguments, if yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, is a good. There's really not a lot of facts on the arguments. Y'all did good. I mean, in terms of what you guys were saying, yes, you were correct in what you oh. guys were saying. Oh. oh, here's something. I did I know this? Harrison Ford. Oh, sorry, this is for ET. Harrison Ford initially filmed a cameo role in the film as Elliot's school headmaster, but the scene was cut. 
Oh. Elliot. Hmm. That's a cool. <laughs> Indeed. That, that would have been Elliot an interesting crossover. Every day, crossover. Every day right. I'd say, what's up, <laughs> Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Spielberg, make this happen. E.T. and uh, Indiana Jones crossover. Make it happen. <laughs> Put E.T. as the, the little Asian kid. They should have made the crystal Ooh, skull E.T. skull. That, that would have been a shameless <laughs> list. Because if E.T. is the Nazi... And here's uh, Indiana Jones is can Schindler. We move, that can we, can been... we move on, please? <laughs> I like the idea of E.T. being a Nazi false flag. But yes, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Mac, uh, who, who do you think won this? Fuck, okay. Um, you picked me, you motherfucker. Okay, so, here's the thing. Facts. E.T. is a very... Very good film. A lot of cutaways of them turning from phone from turning from shotguns to phones. That was so good and child friendly. Um, Bryce, you were attacking you were attacking Eric for what's iconic, what's iconic, other iconic movies. And look, look, Eric knew exactly who he was fight, who was who who was on this panel. He knows for a fucking fact. I love Indiana Jones. Eric, I'm going to go to you. You picked the wrong one <laughs> if you're trying to kiss my ass because everybody in there, everybody knows that Last Crusade is my favorite Indiana Jones film because it hits the heart. I mean, there was, there was no shot I was choosing. I was trying to say. No shot shot was, it hits the heartstrings the more than anything. But, but, but with that said, Bryce, the fact that you're saying, "Oh, what's iconic? What's iconic about Last? What's iconic about Indiana Jones?" I mean, look at other TV shows. I mean, like, he literally e. invented his story. Is so much story is better. the story is the archaeologist literally like you're looking for you're looking for a hero. He was the hero. He was he. It was either what do you think? This is the thing when you okay, think. Okay, it's Raiders right of the Lost Ark next. Right as it all start. Yeah. I, I, is is there a Wikipedia list of all parody characters that are state normal last name? Yeah. <laughs> also, also, um, you know, you just did fucking Indiana Jones thing. The Boulder Run. Everybody knows that. It's iconic. Come on. I'm picking. I'm picking last year. I'm picking Indiana Jones all the way. Okay. Mustachio. Oh boy. Uh, argument wise, I think you both were pretty tied. You both made very good arguments. Um, they're pretty equal, pretty similar. But I, I don't think I've ever seen ET without falling asleep. I, I, I don't think I've. I don't remember the whole movie. That's how many times I fell asleep in that movie. Um, although, you know, it is iconic. Because of the whole the that one cinema that has ET flying over the moon or whatever, um, because they use that ET flying over the moon as the introduction to. I wish we could figure out which cinema does that. Is it Amblin? Amblin. 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 Yeah. Be because they picked that scene and not an Indiana Jones scene, even though I prefer Indiana Jones, I'm gonna go with ET. Okay. All right. Yep. Woo. Missed. Good argument. That was a good point. I feel the same way as Pistachio. However, no, I am not picking E.T. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that. I have not fallen asleep, but I have been incredibly bored with that movie. Yeah, it's so boring. <laughs> this was yeah. an uphill battle for you. Bryce, it really was because yeah, I already I already knew it, that. If you could have convinced me that ET was worth watching, I would have picked you. But no, no, and that's not even to say that your argument was bad. It was just it wasn't strong enough to hold the candle to Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones is like you know legendary. <laughs> so I go with Eric. 
And that leaves Scott. Yeah, I mean, as much as I enjoy the idea of E.T. being a Nazi false flag. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would get to you. That was the only, that was my last fucking hope of you. It's, it's a solid pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I I also have never been that excited about E.T. as a movie. Uh, you made some strong arguments, but you were also like, both of you were kind of like making very similar arguments. And it, like, obviously, these are like two of his best movies, so it's hard to yeah, ding either of them. <laughs> <Last> Crusade, <laughs> fucking... Yeah, I mean, sure, they could have, somebody could have said Last Crusade had beaten both of these, but. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> I would have said <laughs> Last Crusade. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you, you could have said the same thing about The Terminal. Yeah, you could have. <laughs> his best movie. Indiana? Let it go. But yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be racist. Why didn't I pick Indiana Jones? I'm from Indiana. I'm <laughs> Indiana <laughs> Jones I, the last it, I, I was, I was this close to picking AI, by the way. I wish you had. Right on my oh, alley. I wish you had. I love weird, dark Spielberg. <laughs> Minority? I, I, like, I'm like, I, I almost picked dark. AI. I was like, no, it, that's just Steven Spielberg doing his best Stanley Kubrick impression. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yep. I would have said, no, um, no. <laughs> Eric, you got uphill battle. I love, I love AI, by the way. AI it's such a good movie. AI is not bad as it seems. It's just... Like if in that instance, ET is gonna win. I'ma sorry. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought. Yeah, ET might have won. Yeah, yeah right, ET would have won. Which, which, which two initial movies will win? Yeah. AI. Yeah. Or ET? It's like I love AI. I I understand that it also could be just as boring as a movie as ET. Right, and that would have been a great thumbnail. <laughs> AI versus ET. You know? Yeah, it's it's All it's the, it's it's uh, ET with the Reese's pieces, and it's and it's you know you know uh, AI him with the spinach. Bear? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so um, Scott, Scott, question two. What, Scott, you're gonna talk about what's in the chat because there's some people that said something. Yeah, you. Oh. No, there's somebody that said something in the YouTube chat. Somebody say something to me. Oh, I in the YouTube I, I don't chat. Say something to Bryce specific, specifically. Um, the oh, spiritual black sheep told me to tell you that you're hot. Oh, wow. What now? <laughs> the spiritual black sheep said that you're hot, Bryce. I can't see the chat, but thank you. Uh, yes, you too. Oh, black sheep. yeah. The on, spiritual uh, black sheep got a fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there it is. Big I yes. didn't say you're hot. Oh, wait. Finally. Somebody, somebody got an admirer. God damn, it only took 40 oh, years. He's got a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Take this hat off. You're gonna say you're gonna leave the chat real quick. Oh wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Guess Ben actually said Jurassic Park is the best Spielberg film. I kind of forgot. He I, was, I was real close. I was real close. I love Jurassic Park. I love so there, there are, I was so That's close. The best that. movie. There you is uh, too the many. Best movie. He's there made a lot of good many movies. good Spielberg movies. I know. He's, he's like a good director. This guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's yeah, like a he's, fucking I think legend. He's gonna go somewhere. You know. You know. It still remember the name. I, I saw this movie, this the, the Fabermans. You know, I think he's going somewhere. You know, maybe maybe one day Steven Spielberg will win an Oscar. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> There's good. I know that's in a that joke, but I'm gonna not take the joke. <laughs> All right. So Eric won that one, huh? Yep. yep. Great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Someone could have pitched. Right, but we're but, we're going to talk about that, your ET pitch. I mean, oh, if that was on FanDuel, the odds were in your favor already. So, right. <laughs> I was like, my, I was, you're, you're like minus 2,000 on that money line. Yeah. So, somebody could have said Hook, but you know, um, you know. I don't Matt, think Spielberg would no. disagree with that. Hook, Matt, Hook's Matt. fun, but that one really doesn't age well. I, and I, also, I let's that. be fair, the only thing that was best about it is Rufio. Rufio is a fucking amazing Rufio. character, and you should all be Oh, he is the Give only returning Rufio. voice yeah, cast cool in the new Avatar movie, and I don't like it because Jack Dickinson deserves deserves better. <laughs> I do love some Rufio though. All right, question two. Number two. What best? Oh, oh my gosh, Mac. What is the best TV show based on a video game? There we go. All right. Perfect. 
All right, Matt, are you ready with the uh, the answers? I'm ready. Who's first? Okay. We are starting with Bryce this time. Bryce. All right. Best TV series based off a of video game. I'm going to go with The Last of Us. Which is funny because E.T. was on the screen when you said that. Perfect. <laughs> E.T. is gonna, the last It's not going to end. It's not going to end like E.T. It's not going to end like E.T. Right. And Eric? Sonic has got to go fast. Yep, he already won. He saw. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> this is bullshit and you know it. <laughs> All right. Okay, you guys, uh, Bryce, you ready to go? Indeed. Unmuted. All right. <laughs> cool, cool. Missed. Whenever you yes. You got the clock? Yes. <gasps> go. All right. Well, with The Last of Us, we already know the story is A1. Anybody that's played the game already knows that the story is what makes this game Obviously, the directing and the cinematics and acting are part of it, but the the story is the main key here. And this, in the re in the video or the TV series retelling of this game, the story rings true to every aspect of it. I mean, it really just takes you through the whole story again, as if if you had never played the game, you won't need to play the game after it, you because you're going to go through the same experience. You know, you're going to get the same story. But in this, you're getting better actors, better budget, and just you're getting the real action in front of you with real people instead of the CGI. Um, it's gotten nominated for 24 Emmys. It won eight of them, um, including Best Show and Story. Um, Stop. Oh. oh. Boy. All right, you got some strong competition there, Eric. You ready? Oh, yeah. Gotta you have to fast. sing your whole argument. Absolutely not. Gotta go fast. <sighs> Don't go fast. Ready? Sonic, Sonic X, obviously, is an a anime from the early 2000s uh, that was adapted by 4Kids Entertainment and has completely reshaped the Sonic the Hedgehog fandom, uh, especially due to the gotta go fast. The term that originated from that theme song is now iconically tied to the character of Sonic himself. Uh, it gave us Mike Pollock, the current voice of Dr. Robotnik, and has carried from this series on through three voice actor purges. Uh, it has it does everything that a video game adaptation should. It's you know it starts off with original story, adapts the story, and then continues back in its the game world with a brand new story, brand new character. Cosmo is a character that people love and want to return that originated in only in this series and people want to see in the main games. But just Sonic X as a as a whole adds to the franchise of Sonic the Hedgehog and it Stop. and it <laughs> and it is your sentence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And All right, over. I'm ready to hear you guys fight this one out. All right, um, let me get this turn to gallery mode. I'll probably be away from the camera because I gotta go get something. So, but whenever you're ready, Rush, if you're in danger, make sure you bark very loudly. <laughs> it's gonna be on mute. <laughs> that does not help your case, Mac. <laughs> All right, three and a half minutes and go. See, unfortunately, Bryce, you did half of my argument for me. You you said it yourself. It's the same story again as they released the game three times over the last ten years, and then also released a show again with the same yeah. story again mm -hmm. and done it again and again and I again. I knew that would be your argument. I knew that would be absolutely your argument. That's, nothing that's the only to argument the story. because you can't argue the story. You can't argue the acting. You yeah, because argue the, the directing. Playing, you can't playing argue... Last of Us is the superior experience. But. It, it that's a matter of perspective. That's why more people have watched it than have played it at this point. I mean, you're not gonna more people watch movies than play video games, or at least that type of video game. If you're getting into a horror shooter genre that takes 20, 40 hours to complete, and it's just you and your friend trying to watch you play a video game, 
that's not that's not how it works. The the more entertaining for the group in the room and the family, or it's not necessarily a family show, but for the group, it is to watch the show. And and if you have played it, you're still getting you're getting that reminiscent feeling. You're like, oh wow, I remember that. Like I remember that scene. It looks perfect to it. You know, look, they did it just how it looked. They didn't try to stray it in a different way that made it. Oh, you mean you know, they didn't try to that, that lower the all? value? Everything they did that might be the same, it increased the value of the of the franchise, and that's why they kept remaking it because they know people are going to buy it. Obviously, I mean it's a it's a money pool, but that's because they know people are buying this shit because it's a great story, and there's lots of generations that you know this game's been around a while. We want to sell this to another generation, every generation of video game consoles. Um, and I mean, like I said, 24 Emmys, eight or nominations and eight wins. Like it, it's everybody's talking about Last of Us. It's I mean, what everybody's I mean, Sonic, singing the Sonic, Sonic X theme song 20 years later. And I mean, well, yeah, 20 years later, it took 20 years before no, an, it's an, been... an American anime actually got released in Japan. No, it was really it. it, it no, it didn't get released in Japan. So how's a great anime not get released in Japan for 20 years if it's that great? Because, I mean, it's because it's basic compared to right, good anime from Japan. It's, just, you know, it's Sonic. I mean, we, we've all seen Sonic. We've all seen it's at, at the bottom of it. Yes, it's fun. It's exciting. But if we're talking about good, deep story, evolved thought and just good directing and acting like real deep acting like have you watched these people these people are crying and dying all over the place it's it's amazing i'm just saying like this i've watched i've tried to watch every video game rendition of anything because i love it and most of them fucking suck and this how was one, twisted metal I, I i am curious i it looked fun that's one i haven't watched yet only because fun. i'm just like a. I never owned a PlayStation, so it wasn't a big game for me. So it didn't draw me in. Oh, so that's why you enjoyed The Last of Us series, because you never actually played the game. Because, no, well, because I watched it. And I've watched it. I, I mean, there's ways to watch games without playing it. Like Stop. on Twitch. Stop. Yeah. I'm back. That was, low, that was a low blow, but that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> you literally sorry you literally walked no i do trap. now though i mean i have a playstation 5 no but i have a playstation 5 now i'm able to play it now hit. i wasn't able to that, play it. that was that you was just threw a bomb at the end <laughs> i love it you were that. no i never i didn't play it till after i saw it of course yeah we figured that out when you didn't answer his question what was the clip well the time right now no it didn't what was the he question? Act, he, he, he actually said it like for seven or he had seven seconds left to say yes I did play or no I didn't play. I didn't play it before it came out. Before the TV show came out. Because ah. I didn't own a PlayStation until PlayStation 5. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's mine. It's a broke bitch. <laughs> That's what it stands for, big bro, son of a bitch. Does uh, does anybody have a question for these guys? I do, unless somebody wants to go. No, nope. go ahead, go for it. Okay, how do I want to say this? What is something unique about the show that isn't in the game? Good question. Oh. That's a yeah, that's a great question. Great yeah. question. This might decide uh, it for me. Bryce, you want to start? Is it on me? <laughs> yeah. Um I'm gonna go with our boy, the main actor, uh what's his name? Pablo. Pedro. 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 Sorry. I'm mixing it up with Halo. <laughs> Pedro. I'm going to go with him, man, because he really, like, his acting in that, in that was, I mean, it was leaps and bounds beyond the the people that did it in the game. Um, he just, that, that alone, 
that's what I'm going with is Pedro's acting. Okay. You you know it's everybody's favorite plant girl Cosmo and the entire Metarex storyline in general. Just everybody everybody loves the final arc of Sonic X to bits. Are devastated that uh, uh, the death of Cosmo at the end of it. That Tails lost his girlfriend. That Tails even had a girlfriend in the first place. Everything about Cosmo. Mwah. Chef's kiss. All right. Do we have uh, do we have any facts that need to be checked? Ah, well, Bryce is correct. Even though I didn't even watch the show, I am also very much aware that it's basically telling the first game. Not the second game, but the first. Mm -hmm. Season two is going to be the second game. <laughs> uh, you sure about that? They might they might do something a little different. I don't know. <laughs> they, might, they might only do something different because they don't want to kill off Pedro Pascal. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, you're correct. Spoiler alert! If you didn't play Last of Us Part 2! Hey, now, now you're just fighting for my argument well, there. Well, well, no, I mean, they're, in a, they're, I mean, I mean, in the fact, fa you can fact this, because in, in, the, in the Last of Us Part 2, there are scenes where they go back to when Ellie and in him were younger. So oh, no, could, sorry. That, Ellie yeah, and they, Joel. Yeah, they could patch that into one season. So it's not all lost. But yeah, we, that's going to suck. <laughs> that's going to hurt. Turn, oh. turn turn Last of Us into This Is Us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Mustachio, who do you think won this one? Oof. Well... Okay, well, the argument that it wasn't a good anime because it didn't get released in Japan for that long is a great argument. Because, yeah, why didn't Japan pick it up if it's so good? It was Sonic X. Um, Last of Us, I was, it got really good reviews. It's a good adaptation of the video game. I haven't played the game, but I would watch the show. And that would lead me to play the game, I think. So I'm going to say, even though Gotta Go Fast, that was a really strong argument. Almost won me. Almost won me over because I didn't know that was from Sonic X. I'd never watched Sonic X. But uh, I'm going to go with The Last I, of Us. I do, I do have to fact check this, that it in fact did release in Japan and when it came out originally. Yeah, I was yeah. actually fact checking that one too. Because all good animes come from Japan. It did come obviously. from Japan. It, it it was made in Japan. That, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, still, I'm going with The Last of Us, but uh, because it would make me watching The Last of Us makes me want to will, will make me want to play the game. Fair. Fair indeed. Miss, who do you think won? Well, I'm. On the opposite end, I have played both Last of Us games, so I have no reason to watch the show. So I'm oh. going with Sonic. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Mac? Fuck, why couldn't you just pick two answers to keep me out of this, you sons of bitches? Thanks, okay. Thanks, 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 unluckily, thanks. unluckily here, here's the thing. I watch both of these, and I'm also with this. I played The Last of Us Part One and Part Two, um, and I also watched Sonic X. And both of these, I I'll admit this: um, The Last of Us, putting it from the game to the screen, like you don't get good adaptations off of video games that good. It's not supposed to be this damn good, but they do. But at the same token, um, um, the question was, what did they do different? And I it, like what Ms. Sasha said, that's the part that would have won it over. And I came in at the tail end. I felt like Bryce, your answer was a little bit like I don't know. It was more so like, okay, yeah, Pedro Pascal is is a great actor, but I was hoping that you would go with 
um, you know, the how they changed a lot of things that you didn't see in the film. That you see, like they changed a lot of stuff that you see in the game, and they flipped it and they took risk in it. Um, I didn't like that because yeah, Pedro Pascal is good. Don't get me wrong. I felt like El- the casting was done well. That's one thing I will say. This so ah. Uh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this to Eric again, um, and I'm gonna see if what what I'm gonna see what Scott had to say. Yeah, this was a tough one because you both I mean, you were both making interesting points, but I feel like I heard because like the question isn't the best adaptation of a video game; it's the best TV show based on a video game. So I feel like I heard more about what made The Last of Us a better TV show overall, whereas with Sonic X, I heard a lot about uh, its lasting effect on the yeah. the Sonic fandom as a whole. So I'm I'm going to go with The Last of Us on this one, which splits it. Good yeah. point. Fuck. <laughs> a tie. Put it down, it's a tie. Good answer, good answer. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that we tied. I guess they both get a point. Yeah. I, I, I I have I had yeah, one more on, low yeah. I had one more low blow mm-hmm. locked and loaded. Mm-hmm. I would like to it? unload now. I the bet. only thing your show contributed to the Last of Us franchise is making people upset over gay people one season too early. Can't <laughs> 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 blame For the you, show. Both for of you who ignorance. didn't know there are gay characters in the Last of Us. And the gays didn't know. There. Yep, there is definitely El- one. There is definitely one. Okay. That's Ellie. Scary. Ellie is one of them. Yeah. No, yeah. no I Isn't don't. Me? I don't mean her. I meant um. Who's the dude? Ellie. <laughs> um, gay Ellie. There's a guy that's, in the that's also gay. And he's a gay Nazi. Right? <laughs> uh, so we're gonna give them both a point. I guess. Yeah, give them both a yeah. point. I love it's that. A short point. Yeah. All right. Two to one. Yeah, I'm out the there climb. I already know it. To the one. Uh, there's, there's five questions. Oh, there's five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's not going to be bullshit. Don't worry. You can do it. I see. All right, I so mean, there's okay. one more question. I, I see. This, this, there's one more question, probably. Yeah. Yeah, but this is. this is, No, y'all gave both good arguments. I wasn't even hearing her for half of it, but I was like, damn, already tough. I don't even know what to pick. Um, all right. Mac, are you ready with question three? I am ready to go with question three. I love question three. I do too, and I love both answers. I want to hear these arguments. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> I know what's going to happen because I know dark shit on both of these guys. I know dark well, shit. Well, it's Nickelodeon. I think we all yeah, know yeah, dark I know stuff dark on them now. Comes with the territory. Right, I'm set. Mustache, you want to go ahead? And yeah! Yeah! Okay. Yay! What is the best '90s Nickelodeon TV show? All right. It's We're time for Eric. all that. <laughs> oh shit! The dark one. All right, there he goes. Just all right. a piece of corn. <laughs> no, well, there, the corn? there was a big giant corn. Big ear of corn with the cast member. Yeah. 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 The best cast member. Yes, Come he on. was. <laughs> All right. And uh, Bryce? The Ren and Stimpy Show. Classic. All right. Eric, it's are you ready to go? Yeah. Tell us why all that is the best. Go. <laughs> So members of the writing staff aside, all that is an incredible SNL for kids that gave us Kenan Thompson. I mean, how can you deny the gift that is Kenan Thompson? Uh, It is just an incredible sketch comedy show that gave us such such iconic characters like uh, French with Pierre Escargot, uh, Good Burger... Repair man, 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 man. Uh, and I, you could you could go on forever just naming characters from all that, just from season one. Super dude, uh, the, the 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 dude that that Keenan played that had all the things in his pants that he just pull out. 
Uh, it is just an incredible kids SNL. You're oh. done? Okay. <laughs> you had five seconds left, but okay. Because <laughs> you're coming right back. You didn't need it. Yeah. Oh, right, man. Bryce. Man, 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 man. All right, Bryce. You got to feel better. I'm repairing. That's, that's wrong. Man, 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 man. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Yeah, you're ready. Hold, hold on. Do we have all, all of that out of our system? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Let me hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm a dude. Right He's now. a dude. She's He's a dude. Because we're, we're all dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Bryce, you got an uphill battle. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? The story of my life. We ready? ready? Okay. Yeah. Well, first, I'm just going to say a couple things. Matt Groening said, only good cartoon show on TV back when this was in. It's got a 100% rating season one. 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes season one. Um, at a time, it was the most all-time watched or the most watched TV on uh, or the most watched show on cable TV. Um, this, I mean, Ren and Simby's classic. We all know for its kind of off-brand humor. It was very coarse and weird, kind of like a little bad acid trip, but it was for kids for some reason. And I mean, but we all remember classic lines and characters and just all sorts of comedy that we had never experienced before to where you know we're still talking about it it got picked up by another network and they did a whole another series of it but i mean we've got a cat and dog going at it all the time ren you stupid idiot you're stampy <laughs> whatever you know and stop, we got stop, powder stop toast man yourself. Save yourself from that happy, way because you messed up the line. Joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah, we got the music. Happy we got, yes, we got the happy soundtrack. Joy. I don't know if you guys ever had the soundtrack, but that, I mean, it had its own soundtrack. It was stop, full of bangers. Stop, stop. 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 Bang, bang, bang. I was just singing happy, happy, joy, joy. Cry. Yeah, we're striking all of what you just said off the record. Nobody ever happy, said, joy, joy. nobody ever said, no, time. they did. They did. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We we're basically trying to help you a after, little bit. After after Powder Toast, man, everything you said is off the record. <laughs> I'm pretty sure before Powder that too. Toast. Strike it from the record. Pretty sure everything before that was too. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I love Red and Stimpy. I, I do. I do. I do. Eric probably got something on you. He's he's been he's rubbing his hands. Look at him. He's rubbing his beard. He knows he's got something. What does he? Oh no 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 no! Well, well, hold on right. hold on hold on! What stop, can he stop, have? Stop! Play it on the set. Stop. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Shut it down. I'll three, minutes, three and a half minutes on the clock. Reel it in. Reel it in. Three and a half minutes. Go. Bing, bing. I mean, that's all I gotta say. Is quiet on the set. I mean, what and I gotta we all say know what is, we're Dan, about, right? is is that Dan Schneider was not the show creator for all that. <laughs> no, but Nick he was Williams just was, on the right? writing staff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean that's close enough, right? He's got it. No, that's answer. that's that's HBO Max. That's a different story. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Well, like I was saying about Ren and Stimpy. You were what you were saying 100%. about uh, Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon, one of the worst cartoons to ever exist. Adult the, the, the party? thing you brought up. Oh, on Spike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it wasn't the greatest, but whatever it got picked up, all that didn't. But I all mean, that did get picked up again. Where it did it, it, it did Off of Nickelodeon. It, got, it, it did a reboot. <laughs> On Nickelodeon, though. I'm talking about from another network. Like, yeah, because Nickelodeon network. wanted nothing to do with John Kay. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, they wanted everything to do with, you know, quite on the set guy. But who, all I'm saying again, is, what, was not the showrunner for all that. As a show. If we get down to Ren and Stimpy as a show. I never liked Ren and Stimpy. Show. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I never liked Ren and Stimpy. I it mean, was... it is a very different type of humor, but like any sketch comedy show, it's hit or miss. You know, it's very, mm -hmm. eh, 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 you know, and you're doing this yeah, kind as of a, as improv a... acting. Whereas, I mean, we've got these detailed animated sets. We've got well thought out stories and jokes that are executed well because we have time to rehearse and do it. You know, we're not just kind of springing the shit on some kids. We've got a decent team that has good jokes and a creative outlook. I, I Ren and Stimpy, we got Powdered Toast Man, a guy that farts cinnamon. I mean, a, a super. I mean, come on. If you're, I mean, Ren I mean, Stimpy 
a, it's a, just a, guy a classic with... duo of you know like they're like a yeah, Beavis so, and so classic you got their names mixed up it, yeah i mean in in one joke wow <laughs> but i'm just if you look at the reviews you look at the numbers ren stimpy has put it down as one of the best to come from nickelodeon all that you know was funny and had like you said keenan thompson but keenan thompson would have shined or shown without nickelodeon he would have found a way eventually anyways or without we, all we, that necessarily he would you know i mean but how many you know keenan I, I mean with, without all that keenan thompson really that had good? no roots to return to when he went to snl without all that because I mean, he returned to his roots going back to uh, sketch comedy after his failed movie movie good career Burger was not like not funny it was not good the, like the for, movie, for a the movie or the skit? A, I mean, because we're skit, talking about the, the TV show. No, yes, the skit. Yes, and that's what the Ooh, that is movie a take was, that the the skit Good Burger is not funny. That is a take. And, well, and the, the, yeah, and the movie too. I mean, the, I just did, they, they, those weren't funny to me. They were, you know, there wasn't like a joke. It was just like two guys being stupid. You know what I mean? Uh, good Good Burger famously having one person the skit. Like Cheech and Chong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just don't the 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 humor on all that. While it's it has its moments and good characters, it wasn't. I've never laughed so hard. Stop! Stop! As I have it. Stop! Stop. I have a question. Yeah. Um. Besides now, Sprice, I won't. I'm I'm taking away the happy happy joy joy. So you can't use that because we're, that's basically me giving it to you. But what is your most iconic sketch or scene from your respective shows? Is that y'all think it's a good show, question? Yes. Yeah. Right. I have the same one. And also, Eric, to be fair, you cannot use any of the skits that you just said. That that's you think that's fair? Yeah. Yeah. You got plenty more in there besides those, because I know. I know. <laughs> This is a library. <laughs> I almost forgot about that skit. I did. I did too. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> Iconic. Oh, Lori yeah. Beth Denberg. Yeah. So good. Very yeah. underrated. She Very underrated. So, underrated. so underrated, yeah. yeah. She was actually really funny on Steve Harvey's show, too. Yeah, she was. Mm. Bryce, she was Bryce? really horny on Steve Harvey show. Uh, she was the, the iconic uh, scene from Run to Be that I remember dying laughing at the most was Space Madness. Uh, oh, Run and Stimpy was... are lost in space without <laughs> supplies or food, and they're going days. And there's a scene where Ren is in the bathtub, and like the soap's floating up and he's just like dreaming of all this food and he's just like oh he glazed ham and he's and then he starts looking at stimpy and he thinks he's the ham you know the classic like cartoon scene where the, the, the your neighbor turns into food you know and he starts starving and i just remember dying at space madness like the whole and then he's like ren just losing his mind it was absolute comedy to me Every time in any scene, but Space Madness in particular. Okay, if I fact about that particular episode, Ren made me want to eat soap because he made me think of an ice cream bar. Yeah, Same. Oh, that's, the, that's the one he ate soap. Yeah, in, yeah. he was <laughs> yep. eating the soap and calling it an ice cream bar. He made me almost <laughs> eat soap because of that. I <laughs> Miss, <laughs> miss, um, yes. miss, I'm so is all that. Look at me now. Listen, miss, miss, um, I'm probably thinking that me and you both, um, got something on Ren and Stiffy, so I'm gonna just probably probably can tag team that one. <clears throat> oh, I got a lot of stuff on Ren and Stimpy and mm -hmm. all that. Me too. <laughs> so you go ahead and so start. go. No, 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 because mm -hmm. I've been doing most of it. So go. All right, all right. Well, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Ren and Stimpy. Um, so. Bryce, Eric actually was holding back 
because he didn't even shoot the smoking gun. You went after him about Daniel Snyder. Uh, no, I said I said Nickelodeon wanted nothing to do with John Kay. I did yeah, bring you it did up. say that, but you didn't go into detail. Why? <laughs> do we need to? That that we, man. We don't, we don't need to. We don't maybe, need maybe, to. Maybe we don't do that on this show. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, it, it's like this. If you guys think uh, Dan Schneider was bad, bad, look at that dude. Yeah, John C. John K. John K. Yeah, John K. Yeah, John John K. K. I mean, he got such a, he got such a, like, man, he, they came after him as soon as Weinstein, as soon as the Weinstein stuff popped up, his name was popped up in front it of actually, it. Actually, the, uh, the Seems uh, like that. Oh, every, wait, everybody, wait. everybody we talk about now is fucking yeah. a Hitler. The, the adult show, yeah, that, that, the John Ren K. is K. the adult Schneider, show. Bowser. Adult, adult party cartoon? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. That. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that that is legitimately the show he wanted to create. Yeah. The reason why Ren and Stimpy was created from Nickelodeon is because they told him to tone it down. Tone it down. That was the point. And if you so watch... the adult party one was actually the exact thing he wanted to make. That was his vision for Nickelodeon. He pitched that, and then they were like, "No, yeah." Told him but we're talking down. about Nickelodeon show. Well, not I mean, so yeah, I mean, to to be fair, when he pitched it, Nickelodeon as a network didn't really exist in the form that it exists when yeah, it premiered. Yeah, Nickelodeon has taken on a different form from what we know of it now. Yeah, as a as a kids, it's no longer yeah, shaped he, like a foot. Yeah, half the stuff that <laughs> that you talk about Dan Schneider and the foot stuff and all that stuff, man, that joke was getting away with sex jokes and rendering snippy like a motherfucker. Don't underestimate that man. He was getting away with him. He was he was like, how far can I get away with some stuff? Yep, he did it. And in fact, most of the people who are working on cartoons in the nineties were doing the same thing. That's why we got the jokes that we did. Exactly. But yeah. Perfect. Dan Schneider, you know what well, all that Eric is one hundred percent the showrunner. He wasn't the showrunner. He was not the showrunner. He was he, not. He was a writer, though. I mean, he, he was, was a writer with it, but he was not the the show. Yeah, writer. he wasn't the full focal point of it because all the stuff that you're talking about him with the with the HBO Max stuff with the Max stuff. That's when he was in the set. They, he didn't he didn't do that when he came back and he did all that. Then he was the showrunner. When he was a showrunner, it was a different story. All that stuff was when he was the showrunner. So, yeah. Also, fun fact about Jan Schneider, he was on a TV show called Head in the Class with Brian Robbins, who was also part who of was the actually show. the showrunner for all that. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And uh, who's the guy that played hmm. uh, Chris hmm. on Keenan and Kel? Who played that, who? Yeah. Chris on Keenan and Kel. That particular guy was also on Head of the Class with the two of them. Mm -hmm. mm. They're mm. all in cahoots. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I don't think he was, but he definitely sounds like a big ring. Him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Nickelodeon is dark as fuck. I don't even know why. Oh yeah, like there's like stuff about how like the people who did Rugrats yeah. would draw like um oh, suggested yeah, cartoons. Yeah, we're gonna find weird shit on all sides. I, I, listen, yeah. I don't I don't want to hear anything about suggestive drawings of the baby cartoon, okay? <laughs> it was baby, it was Angelica. She's not a baby, she's a tot or um yeah, she is a tot. That's she's not a better. You not have not to understand that that's not better. Angelica's like evil as fuck. Well. But anyway. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so right. here, here's a different fact that I actually did not know. Emma Stone apparently auditioned for all that. Not uh, successfully, but she did. Makes sense. That sounds interesting. Yeah. She mm. just didn't have the she funny bones. Funny. I wish I had tried out for all that. I wish I did too. I would I, 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 I wish I, I, I had it. auditioned for the second cast. That would I would have killed, killed, killed it. <laughs> we would have all been there killing it. I would have been killing it. We should I all start a, a new all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, and also say, I, would, I would want to get in the writers' room, but no, er no. Eric was correct. <laughs> All that was rebooted. It was. By they Kenan both, and both Kel. of these shows were. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was rebooted by Kenan and Kel. I don't think the new re reboot wasn't as go wasn't going well because that well, that went under the radar real quick. I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a sketch comedy. Most sketch comedy shows, it, it's yeah. hard to keep that going. It, it it's it's hard to do sketch comedy. For kids in this day and age, because you're just going to compare it to all that in the nineties. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. here's another one in favor of uh, what uh, Eric said. Lori Beth Denberg's favorite sketch of her own is Loud Librarian. 
<laughs> well, I don't remember it was funny. Uh, she was fun. She was, was funny. Was also, funny. also another underrated sketch: vital information for your everyday life. Yes. Super underrated. Yes. yes. Her her least favorite is vital information, although it was the more popular sketch. Mm-hmm. Well, I like I like Ask Ashley. I love that. <laughs> that's me. I try I I tried to avoid bringing up any Amanda Bynes. I know, but that's quite awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I know. Okay. I, yeah. yeah. We just, we just had to do a deep about dive how there was shit going John on Day. on that show, but Amanda Bynes is all come on, man. Yeah, but Amanda Bynes was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we also have to mention okay. Nick Cannon and before he had fifteen thousand babies. Yeah, Damn it. but but before Nick Cannon had fifteen thousand babies, and yeah. also before he was a cast member on that, was a Just child writer on that. By the way, yes. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Good job, uh, Nick Cannon. All right, M- Mist. Who do you who do you think won this round? Crap. Because <laughs> at some point. I kind of dropped off with both of these. <laughs> the problem is, I dropped off all of that quicker than Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> hmm. The time I dropped off Ren and Stimpy was when it turned into the adult party version. So, yeah. Left unfortunately, I have to go with Ren and Stimpy because oh, I wow. didn't watch the part where it had Amanda Bynes on it. That's why I stopped. Oh, that's season two. Ah. <laughs> uh. She didn't interest me. Like, there. I mean, she interests me in her movies, but not on all of that. All right, I get you. So. I mean, you also miss uh, Gabriel Iglesias on all that. I did. I didn't even know he was on the show until way after the fact. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I know that next. I probably would have watched the show. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. It also means you miss Danny Temporelli on all that. Which I is, did. Which is another crime. Yes. <laughs> Pink Pink yeah. did exist, though. Um, now, I, I stuck with both of these shows for a while. And they're both, like, weird. And they kind of have, like, their weird off-brand humor. Obviously, Ren and Stimpy's is way more out there. And less, like, approachable for <laughs> most people. Um, but I've found that I've revisited Ren and Stimpy more later than I did than I have all that. Like I, I don't go back and like rewatch all that skits. I but I'll I'll rewatch Space Madness. You know? So I'm I'm going with Ren and Stimpy on this. Fuck. Alright. Uh Mustachio. I loved television. I love TV so much. <laughs> 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 um, but two things sold it for me. First of all, all that had the original. All that had ten seasons, and then I mean, yeah, had five. So I took that into account, and also when we were we asked you guys what is the memorable part of your show, uh, you said um one line, and we all understood. Like, we all got a laugh out of it, and Ren and Stimpy, you had to just describe it to us. And I think there's something in being, like, being able to reminisce about something with one line. Um, So I'm going to go with all that. I will say, when he said Space Madness, I I knew what he was talking about. I was full. I did, too. My brain went right to the soap. The soap I did, did too. Just the eyes and... (laughs) (laughs) Why do you keep putting me in these situations? Okay, look. When I was, it's it's not calculated. I promise. Yeah. I don't know. Am I the oldest? I want to put this out there. Am I the oldest person here? I think How so. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 35. Yep. I'm Me 40. Too. Wait, you're 40. You got to Who's 40? Who in here is 40? Raise your hand. Yes. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I'm, Back in okay, December. Well, I'm, wow, I'm happy birthday. birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, about 40. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm just, just a I'm big, oldest. big kid. Oh. Yeah, you're the, like you're the oldest member of the uh, judges. judges. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'm also 35. I just want to point out. <laughs> Me too. No. Point. 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 <laughs> I watched Nickelodeon since I was a kid, 
and I have watched both of these shows. Um, I, this this shows Mark were literally are part of my childhood. Um, Renaissance is a fun show, and I knew exactly what you were talking about because I was giggling and laughing because I was hoping that. I, Bryce, I'm gonna be honest. I was literally hoping the reason I took that out. I was like, please pick Space Madness, please, please Space Madness, and you pick Space Madness, and I was like, damn it, that's a good episode. So that was a good pick. But Silent Library is so under fucking rated because that shit is just so funny. It's just the stuff that keeps going. It's just. That skit, just that line alone lets you know, lets you know all the shit. Like, she's literally sitting at the library desk, talking on the phone, and it's somebody like, hey, I was like, oh, damn it. Because <laughs> you remember all the shit she did. She all, was the all, the, all the insane, noisy shit she would pull. She was doing Well, it. yelling at people who are not making noise. Exactly. <laughs> and then for that, and not only that, here's the issue. That sketch lasted all the way until Lord Beth left. So that's how I kind even though it it's probably not the one that a lot even just like the statue, it's the one that everybody knows, but it's also the one that stuck because that joke is was still going on until the next crew came in. So with that said, we got another tie here, so I'm going with. I'm going oh, with. this is a good episode. Episode. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, got I, to... I do have a question for you, Bryce. That's though. still yes. Do you know the Canadian Kiltic Yaxman song? <laughs> I, I would. I would also like to point uh, out. It's I, I, been be, so be, long. Before we move on, um, I would like to point out. I would like to point out before before we get into this. Uh, I turned 31 next month, meaning that all of Ren and Simpy aired before I was born. <laughs> Well, you lost. Get out the chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, oh. or rather, all of it Ren and Simpy aired before I was watching TV. I know I've I know I've heard it. I'm, it's been so long I couldn't like recite the Canadian. I was hoping you would have said that because then I would have been like, yeah, you really know your Ren and Simpy knowledge. Yeah, but there's they're just workers right now in the chat. I don't see. I do like, like the uh, the episode when uh, Stimpy farted and he thought it was his kid. I was and... <laughs> thinking about that episode a few days ago. And it went off and married a fishbone. Uh, but, but, but genuinely... No, no, no. You have to say what the kicker is. That's a Christmas episode. <laughs> oh, Gen genuinely, me, genuinely, 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 any time that they would show a Ren and Stimpy rerun, I'm like, why did people like this show? It is just the only, I, I just, I, it never clicked with me in okay, any way. Okay, you're like, Five. Your generation. Understand. Yeah, yeah. You had to be, I guess, <laughs> you need to like four five. years older. You need to be four years older. <laughs> You're like five. Five. <laughs> like five. You don't understand. <laughs> oh, like that. The, the, when Stimpy flipped over the coffee table to show his collection of boogers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't understand the sophistication of log. Yeah, fuck the fuck log. Fucking log. log. The only the only good thing about log was why didn't I just say log? Only only good thing about intro track with log. It's better than bad. It's good. Bryce, you. I'll be honest. I really fucked up. Bryce, Space Madness would have won it. Space Madness was a good pick, but I'm telling right now, I think you would have killed it, and would you would have probably won. And Eric would have had no shot if you picked. Yeah. The the only the only way I would have had a chance against log is if you had mentioned it in the fight, and I could say. The most yeah. iconic thing about Log is the way that they brought it up in Naruto abridged. I, I guess I, you know. <laughs> or, or if you would have asked, if you would have said, if you would have picked, ask the doctor stupid, I would have picked you. <laughs> or Mr. Horse. Or Mr. Yeah, Horse. Mr. Horse. It's, it's hard. There's so little time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So much not, pressure. We, so it's three. So yeah, I pressure. really wish you would have picked Log because I have that song deep embedded in my brain, like the whole song. But Rose has a stairs, a loner and pissed, Rose will be your neighbor's dog. With great for a snack, mm -hmm. it fits on your back, it's log, log, log. Log, log, log. log, log, log. Oh, Alright. Oh, Alright. Happy, happy Matt, boy, do we got a question four already? I'm getting question four already. Hold on for a minute. So wait. Well, if we, so we tied that, we both get a point. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm still ahead but, by one. So you're yeah, up by, by one. one. He's, hold, he's holding on by that one point. Mm -hmm. Holding on. Wow, this will be an interesting fight. So, I can't do this math. 
This stuff is too complicated for me. Look on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, does she know about the scoreboard on the screen? I have the session. No. I don't. I like the session. We got a scoreboard. Yeah, yeah look, look, on, Wait, look on the I'm screen. I'm going to pull it up on my phone so I can see the scoreboard. This is what the show looks like to the viewers on this screen. <laughs> you mean it doesn't just look like this? This is what no, the show no, looks like. No, it does like not just look like viewers. our, our well, viewers. Know, We're live right now. So we got a little it's different a score, scenes It's, it's a little scoreboard on the side, yeah. There's a scoreboard. I used to pull this up. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyways, what's the next question? I'm going to pull it up. All right, I got it right here. What is the... So I'll read it. Worst, what is the worst director of the 2010s? <laughs> oh, that's All right, so we're starting with... Is it me? Eric this time? Or no, no yeah, Bryce this time. I think yeah. it's me. Yeah. Uh, Fred Durst. I mean, solid. Uh, All right, and Eric? I went with Josh Trank. Josh Trank. Before you start director your arguments, do you know I totally forgot both of these guys were directors? <laughs> I just watched the Josh Trank movie like two weeks ago. Yeah, and he, it was it was interesting. Do, do you see the gift that I got up there? Is it from Capone? No, no, it's just him talking. He says, "I have moves." Oh. Wow! <laughs> wow! My guy. Look at that. All right. All right. Uh, Bryce, yes. are you ready to tell us why Fred Durst is the worst director of the 2010s? Are you ready to give it Indeed. all for the nookie? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the real question. Doing. Still waiting right. on the nookie. Yep. All right. So you could take that cookie? Yeah. This is Anchor. a weird musical episode. <laughs> no. Go. All right, worst director of the 2010s. 2019, Fred Durst made a movie called The Fanatic starring John Travolta. Um, Fred Durst, uh, this movie's got 3.6 average on Rotten Tomatoes, like 14%. So it's, um, the, the, there's nothing to this. I mean, it's, it's been called just a miserable psychodrama. Uh, it's def it's been called a downgrade from his last films, whatever the hell those were. Um, just imagine Fred Durst making a movie. I mean, this guy's such a chump anyways, like he says in his own song. Um, he's, there's, he's got three Razzie nominations. If you don't know what that is, that's the awards for the worst of directing and acting. Uh, this movie grossed $3,100 on opening day. Like what? And it's starring Whoa. John Travolta. Stop. Uh, that startled me. I did not even realize the minute passed. <laughs> All right. So maybe we should give uh, Eric a couple extra seconds if he needs it. Do you? Right. Do, do you, Eric? Do you need a couple more seconds? Get, yeah. Get, get, give me. Give me an extra couple seconds. Well, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. See how it goes. Natural. Flow. Okay, I gave you literally two more seconds. All right. Go. So Josh Trank is a story of a director that had everything promised and ahead of him, and then it just all came crashing down. Starting off the 2010s with the cult classic Chronicle, which got him a seat at the table for all the big franchises. He was giving Fantastic Four. He was on the docket to do a Star Wars movie. Everything was going his way until the Fantastic Four movie came out. And they took a... It was so bad, they took away Star Wars from him. That it is just a story of everything... Everything was going so well for this guy. And then he just put out an absolute stinker. Uh, had an... Um, had, Everything going for in the casting wise, it's just the movie just fell so flat. Uh, there's just, and it's just like, not even Michael B. Jordan could save uh, Fan Four Stick, and and not even Michael B. Jordan could save Josh Trank from directing a Star Wars movie. Just all Stop. wasted potential. Wow. All right. Interesting. Yeah, these are both really interesting picks. <laughs> really, and also I have Nookie stuck in my head. 
Well, nice. you, you did that to yourself, to be fair. Yeah, it, I, never... I did. Like, when I saw the what answer, the... I immediately went to YouTube and was like, I want to listen to this song. <laughs> I just heard I'll the say... words chocolate starfish. <laughs> I'll <laughs> save the rest water. of that thought for later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get through this. You know what? Because these guys, not these guys, because these directors are so terrible, I'm going to give you guys 30 extra seconds, so you got four minutes to beat each other. That's like an hour. <laughs> well, I mean, I could put 60 minutes on no, the clock. No, absolutely not. Who says later? <laughs> All right, four minutes on the clock. And beat off. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Startled me with that. Um, so, like I said, this movie grossed 3100 on its opening day. Your movie. How many screens was it put out on? Opening day. This was a, I mean, this is a John Travolta movie. This was a John Travolta has put out movie. so many garbage movies that did not get any screens. I know. He that's was not even for, a point. He was that is not the point you think it is. This movie, and he actually got it for worst actor. It's not actor. the point you think it is. John Travolta got worst actor in this movie. That's John, not uh, the first time Fred, he's got worst actor. Fred, no, he got, yeah, I know he got it twice that year. But the, <laughs> Fred hey. Durst was nominated for the Razzie Boris movie. The, but, I mean, like, top five, whatever. He didn't get it, but. This movie is such a crap. I mean, imagine putting, I don't know, what's it cost to get John Travolta in a movie, even in 2019? 10 million at least? Uh, pro probably a, a pack uh, of gun. And then pulling in 3,100 on opening day. Like, How many screens did it open for? Uh, enough to call it a fucking a movie. Like, a, I don't know. If uh, it, probably look, look one. Look that up. It probably well, was right, one. Well, I'm going to say it was probably one screen. Opening day for your movie, even though, you know, it's crap as well. Obviously, that's why it's on the list here. But opening day, 11.3 million? Like, come on, bro. 11.3 like, million in a, a superhero movie that opened for 11.3 million is it's abysmal. Still, it, uh, well, yeah, but it's still made over its budget. It, so it, it just barely, but it made over its budget. And it, it, wait, it made over its budget a thing that it needs to make double of to be profitable. I mean, imagine, like I said, imagine thirty one hundred being the number you're looking at, rather than eleven million on opening day. I mean, I mean, if you want to talk about, we're talking about bad, another bad, bad, bad opening days. I mean, we're talking about another twenty. Minutes, if you want to talk about bad opening days, we can talk about we can talk about idiocracy. Are we talking about even Fantastic worse. Four? Is that the movie you're talking about, or is yeah. this the movie you did before that? I'm t I'm talking about I'm talking about the right. wasted potential of this man getting take getting Star Wars ripped away from him because he mo made the movie so bad. Are we? But the movie you're talking about is Fantastic Four, right? Yeah. I just want to make sure we're on the, uh, that I'm arguing the right movie here, not the movie you did before that. That was way better, had a lot better ratings because. Yeah, and if, also if movie. If he, this guy did um, two movies. Your guy did two yeah. movies in a year, and one of them was really good. So we're talking about director. Well, te of technically, the he made the movie in 20, 2009. It was well. It was released in the twenty tens. He's got two movies released in twenty tens. One of them was way better than Fantastic Four, and Fred Durst. Yeah, it's one it's, shitty movie in twenty nineteen. So at least your yeah, guy but got who expected two Fred Durst to at put a guy least, a good movie? At least who, your guy who, got who ex two no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Nobody expected Fred deal. Durst to put out a good almost movie. A Star Nobody Wars expects deal. John Travolta to put out a good movie. Everybody expects the guy that made Chronicle Some and Michael B. Jordan to be John good in Travolta movies. To make a good movie, he's made a name being a good actor. No, he hasn't. Where have you been for the last twenty years? Well, look at the twenty years before that, though. That's what I'm saying. He built his name being a good actor. And no, then, yeah, it was only the 20, 10 years the before 20 that, because the 20 years before yeah. those 10 years, he was also known as a bad actor. The man was only known as a good actor for about 10 years. Okay, well, I'm great. I'm glad he was in my 10 years of his, like, 50-year career. I'm glad he was in Fred Durst's movie to make it even shittier than <laughs> the Fantastic Four. At least the Fantastic Four was giving money to young actors, trying to give them a chance. The, the only reason Fantastic Four failed is because they were trying to do a different style, because everybody was so tired of the superhero fucking algorithm already that they were trying, they were like, let's try something different. And nobody was into it because everybody was no, still a was, fucking clone let's, drone. Let's make, let's make a Fantastic Four shit. movie so we can keep the rights. Is what that movie. No, nope, that's all it was. It, it, everybody, you know, it, it, they were trying something different. Nobody wanted it because we just, they wanted to see the same old sh watered down shit. They tried Stop. to. Your guys tried to do. Stop. Bing, bing, bing. I have issues with the statement John Travolta was known as a good actor. 
Yeah, I know, which is why I fought against it immediately. Right. I don't think he ever I, was considered a good actor. He just had really fabulous hair, and he was Italian. I don't know. That, that once upon a thing? time, both of you guys. Once upon a time, that was considered Saturday, good acting. He came out strong <laughs> starting out with Saturday Night Fever. I mean, because he could kind of sort of dance. <laughs> Well, he could okay. dance, and it was like it was yeah, like a solid thing. like drama. That, yeah, that, that was like a, dancing is part of acting. Like the second movie been the Broadway, and he he had, John Travolta had a long like career where he for he was like from the seventies until like the nineties. He he was he consistent. Was do you know until, how hard until, it is for that guy to act until until like until like look and who's Greece talking. and that guy's well, he, 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 no, I'll give him the first look who's talking. And maybe the second. It's the third one where the he should have The first stopped. look who's talking was a he huge was, hit. <laughs> he was amazing in Face Off. People loved that fucking movie. I love Face Off. I'm that the next one came out less than a year ago. Fucking later. finally. Somebody loves Face Off around here. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, I don't love Face fair, Off. To be I fair, love he's that definitely been movie. bad in more movies than he's been good in. I mean, if you want to see how bad John Travolta could be in movies, watch our episode on Wild Hogs. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you I know mean, what? everybody. The fact that there, neither of you picked Wolf as your as your worst director of the 2000s is pretty damning. I who you guys are both. picked who? Wolf Becker, the director of fucking Old Hogs and <laughs> or Wild Hogs and Old Dogs. Well, it was uh, no, because oh, it was Lord. 2010s, not uh, 2000s. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Wait, right. I'm surprised. I'm so, I am so Remember glad that dogs? you. I'm so, so glad, glad that, that you didn't pick great directors like Tama Wazo because he is he is the best director. What what, what movie did he release in 2010? I don't know. Um, uh, um, <laughs> we are best friends. Neil Breen. Neil Breen. I should have picked uh, Steven Spielberg. Neil Breen. Yes. <laughs> Neil Breen is a awesome director, and you should not, you should all. <laughs> he is a narcissist. He is an amazing uh. director, and fuck all of you. All right, so let's. He's an American right. team. It. He loves what, what are what are the what are the fact checks for this it's disaster? Oh, okay. Well, th- now that we have totally well, bashed and thrashed John Travolta's career, for the fanatic, John Travolta took the role of Moose as a tribute to his autistic son Jet, who passed away in two thousand nine. We're oh, all. Oh Lord, that Ooh. was a tribute. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Nobody told me that. Oh. Man. Oh, Where's my assistant? Hey, Alex! Something about what we just said about you and your career. Sorry, John oh, Travolta. Boy. You did do this movie for a pack of for a pack of gum. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's insane. Oh, yeah. I mean, he kidnaps a celebrity. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, how hard is it's this? The fan. It's the same plot as the movie The Fan. Right. He's also the same um, as Die Hard. Celtic he Pride. He did the same shit as Die Hard. Have you not seen Die Hard? Hmm? He did the same shit. <clears throat> what, in Die Hard? That's not Die Hard. No, Die Hart. Die Hart. Die Hart? The Hart. Kevin oh. Hart. Kevin, sorry, Kevin, Kevin Hart. The no. Quibi? Yeah, the Quibi show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did Starring the same Kevin shit. Di- die Hart too. Die Harter the ventricle. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> what that feel. was creative. <laughs> okay. Uh, does are we still doing um, fact checks, or we kind of flipped everything yeah. around on this? Anybody one. got anything? Yeah. 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 I, I'm getting back on track. So okay. So fan four steak got a two point three rating on. Oh, just basic general audience rating. <laughs> in in the world, people are just like, no, it, it's it's. it's and I good. think <laughs> I think the fanatic got a four point one. Hold on, it's pretty uh, solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just yeah. It looks like about a John Travolta, four point one. Not because of the director. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that movie opens with Devin Sawa listening to Limp Bizkit on the radio. <laughs> and, being like, and, and talking about how awesome Limp Bizkit is. Also, on top wow. of that, and I didn't even think about this one, he also plays an obsessed fan in Eminem's video, Stan. Yeah. Who does? Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa. But this time, he is the wow. one. Did, yeah, yeah like in, in the video, <laughs> he's Fred Durst direct that video? Of Eminem. Right. I remember yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. All the way down really to, I think, beating his pregnant girlfriend? I think that's what happened in the video. Oh, no. Yeah, and he throws her in the trunk. It's, it's 
interesting video. Yeah, he, he took Eminem's words a little interested. too literally in the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that song. Drove off the first. bridge and whatnot. Okay. Um, did we ask a, a did, no, did we, we ask didn't. a question? Did we no, ask like, a follow up question? You did. No, we didn't. We won't take it. Do we need to? I don't think we haven't done anything actually. All right, Matt. Do you want to start? What do you think? I'm gonna start. Um, I'm just gonna go quick, fast, and rip the bandaid off. Eric had the best argument the whole time. Bryce just kept trying to dig his stuff out, trying to talk about how bad Fred Durst was, but Eric literally had a punch, had a counter for everything he said. Did you really expect Fred Durst to make a good film? No. But his argument for Josh Trank was, look, Chronicle was good, and if some people didn't like it, a lot of people would have said them a lot from Fran Forstick. And, fan, and I'm not going to lie, I thought Fan Forstick was going to be good, and then we saw it, and then we were all ready to ban this man from everything that he did. Fan Forstick was a bad film, it, it messed him up so bad. So it's the opportunity that what one film can do, and what, what, it's, it's a good example of when you get power over one thing, and you do something, and you fuck it up. So with that, I am going with Eric, and um, you can stand by there. I'm sorry, Bryce. I, I want to pick you because Fred Durst's film sucks. That film seems like it sucks, but his argument was that good, so I'm going with Eric. Let's watch it one time, huh? <laughs> Let's watch it. Not, it's not, it's like, I'm not dramatic. saying that your film bad. I'm just saying <laughs> we weren't expecting that film to be good anyway. We were expecting Fan Four Stick to be good, but sometimes the disappointment is worse than the movie itself. Yeah, well, because we were expecting because Fred Durst didn't have nothing before it. If Fred Stewart Durst did something before whatever film he did, then you'd be like, okay. You knew what this that what we're, we not, keep saying this, but Fred Durst he did had music, like music four videos. movies. I feel like he yeah, also no, he had, he had other movies. movies. Yeah, he had other movies. Just not in that decade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But did you? Were, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm done. They're I'm not bad. Them. They're not all bad. Yeah, they're just fun. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's the fanatic, but the fanatic, the fanatic is fucking insane though. <laughs> all right, I, I I said my piece. I said good day. I said good day. Uh, I said good day. Good day. I say good day. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I'll go next, because I have seen, I've seen every Josh Trank movie, and I've seen a couple Fred Durst movies, but because of the time period that we picked, this basically came down to a worst movie fight, like which movie is worse than the other. Ah, oh, damn. And. I, I definitely. This is the th I personally dislike. Fan four stick, more like I, I think I I would not want to watch that, before like I rewatched the fanatic again before I'd watch that. But I think I heard more about why the fanatic was a bad movie. But also I I was kind of lost in the argument a little bit if I'm being honest. Uh, you were too lost but in the I, sauce. It's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit lost in in the chocolate starfish sauce, but the hot dog flavored water. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Fred Durst. All right. All right. Uh, let's start with Miss this time. Go to Miss next this time. Oh, this is painful. Miss. Okay, because Scott is right. This is kind of a what's the worst movie, even though this is director based and <sighs> yes they're both terrible but just like Tommy Wiseau the fanatic is that kind of terrible where you kind of have to keep watching it because you're like <laughs> how in the world can this get so bad <laughs> Josh Frank's it's... movie after Fan Fa Fantastic Four is like that too by the way <laughs> it's just insane uh, what, Capone? Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Tom Hardy shits his pants in the first scene. <laughs> wow. I'm so, so upset that released in 2020, by the way. But yeah. I had more issues with Fan Four Stick. I don't even like the Fantastic Four. They, I hated 
the superhero group in general. But I had a real issue with this particular movie because it wasn't even entertaining. And the way it stopped, it just it literally just stops. Like what are we gonna call ourselves? The end. That's fantastic. Say that again. The end. Let biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, oh man, we we need to we need to go out and get more food. All these biscuits are so limp. Uh, say, that again. say that again. I hate when the biscuits are limp. I hate that. <laughs> Popeyes, please sponsor us. <laughs> yes, Popeyes. Bojangles. Need some crispy biscuits, goddammit. So I'm gonna go with. Oh gosh, I really didn't want to, but I am gonna go with Van Forstick. I mean. Josh Frank. Yeah, yeah. And Mustachio? I am too. Yeah. You know, I don't like Fantastic Four because of that movie. I really, that director fell real hard and took himself off to Star Wars because the embarrassment was too much. And, and also, <laughs> just another fact about that, he pretty much dropped off. Just in yeah. general, because of this, crawl under a rock, Josh Trank. Until, until crawl under a rock. If you saw yeah, but even and then that, he dropped he, off again. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Like he canceled all, or he got, or deactivated all of his social media accounts, and yeah, so he really yeah, dropped off. Really dropped off because yeah. Piranical was that good, and you were expecting a lot from Fan Four Stick, and yeah, it didn't. It just he had a good cast. If you have, you know, I. I Oh, well, if you have to go into hiding after directing a movie, there's your bad director. <laughs> That's true. And, I, I uh, think that like uh, Fantastic Four, they did so badly. I don't mean just Trank. I mean the ones before that. They did yeah. so badly that people who are you know superhero nuts, they were expecting more of this movie. No one was yeah. expecting anything of Van, uh, the fanatic. Yeah, yeah, but Fantastic Four also, here's the Fantastic Four stick was like, well, it can't get any worse than the other film. And, and lo and behold. There it is. You made the worst one. How? <laughs> they had it. Is the best one the 90s one? Is that still is it, that the, the best, best one? The best one is the Corman one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that that, that right, one. So, so Eric won that round. Yep. Eric won that round. All right. Congratulations yeah. for being the worst. Yay. <laughs> uh, man, I'm going to beat Fred Dirt's ass if I ever see him <laughs> for this. Uh, I don't know. The, the Fanatic sounds like it's an interesting watch. There's nothing interesting about watching Fan Four Stick. No. Exactly. No. Like, I mean, the, the Fanatic I, I is a train tra wreck you have to watch. <laughs> yeah. I watched the trailer before, like earlier today, and I was like, this actually kind of looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it. It's a it's a fun bad movie, but it's it is crazy. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, of also, Judge Revolta's character's name is Moose. Yep. Middle name or last name Knuckle. And he's got a he's got a bowl cut. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a he's got the weirdest hairstyle in that I'm, movie. No, yeah, he's full on like autistic mode. Yeah, like mm -hmm. he's like definition autistic in a stereotypical way. And then ties up his celebrity crush. Which is, you know, I don't know. And he kills the maid for no reason. I, I mean, was any spoiler alert? Was anything anybody expecting anything good out of John Travolta post Battlefield Earth? No. No. I mean, th this is the thing though. Like, he was good in that uh, O.J. Simpson show. Yes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. R.I.P. That's all that out there. No. I, I, oh my God! Did you guys see how Rudnick's no fucking tweet? No R.I.P. <laughs> Did you guys yeah. see how Rudnick's fucking tweet? What do you think? Who? Do you think the Oscars are gonna show uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Naked Gun actor oh, O.J. No. Simpson in the in memoriam for the Oscars? Not at all. <laughs> nah. No way they do it. <laughs> they probably would. <laughs> Man, that's that's really sad that as bad as he is, he was freaking funny in those movies. Yeah, he was. He is. Uh, yeah, he was funny. In they're those probably gonna have him in the back seat, like. Yeah, and then shit got real serious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, last question of the night. I'm ready for you. I'm actually ready for All this right. question too. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah this is very. Oh, I, mean, I, mean, I also, I also hope it never happens. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this one's just for fun. Yep, it is. <laughs> it's an aired one. 
I am excited for these arguments. Oh yeah, though. I was gonna say I thought it was. Oh yeah, congratulations. Yes, thank you. Yay! But I, I, I'm more really excited to fight to fight this question. This question is gonna be fun. All right, so yeah. last question for tonight. Who wants to read it? I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll do it. Who should play Dutch in the Predator remake? <clears throat> Eric, Chris Hemsworth. You already won in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I was. You you tried to go in a different direction and realized I picked the correct answer. <laughs> I love your point two combos. <laughs> and Bryce. Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> Interesting choice. I like it. That's right. You like All it because right. she's pretty. No, because she's a badass. She's in so yeah. many action movies. Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> you, you like it because she's pretty. Right. Well, that's, that's why yeah. you like I mean, Chris. Chris Hemsworth is pretty, so what? How dare you, sir? Because he is <laughs> handsome. Chris Hemsworth is also pretty. No, no, no. Chris Hemsworth is pretty. His abs are okay. handsome. handsome. He's absolutely very pretty. He's <laughs> Chris Hemsworth, if you pretty ever face. divorce your wife, Absent my phone chips. number is 555. Five, five. Okay, 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 okay. Chris Hemsworth is handsome. Liam Hemsworth is pretty, okay? <laughs> no, Liam Hemsworth can go back no. to Australia. Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> All right, let's hear these arguments. Let's do it to it. Let's get to the job ball. <laughs> what? Get, all right. Is that yes, ready? that's is that all that it's about. Film. Where are we going? Yes. Yes. So we, no. yes. So when it go, came, go, oh, are we going? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I thought I didn't know. I was waiting for yeah. it to go. Go. Yeah. Okay. So when it when it came down to it, the only person that I had in mind to play Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Dutch in Predator was Chris Hemsworth. And then I chose it, and I'm like, wait, is Chris Hemsworth old enough? And he is older than Arnold was when he made Predator. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, you know, it doesn't really look like it because, damn, that dude is in such good shape. Uh, but Chris Hemsworth, he's the right age. He's the right build. He can bring everything to a movie that Arnold is capable of bringing and then some. Uh, I think that if you were to really put Chris Hemsworth in a true action movie set not cgi superhero stuff but like a real 80s action movie style movie that he would absolutely fucking excel He's i get it i get your angle it. I, I get your angle but i feel like we've seen what? a lot whoa, of chris whoa, 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 whoa. No, wait. oh wait Hold on. oh we're not Hold fighting jumping the gun wait 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 stop stop <laughs> eric fight. you get 10 more seconds for that no one. no it's it's fine it's oh, fine sorry oh, okay <laughs> You're eager, I get it. Cool. My... You already lost. Bryce, you get less than 10 seconds. You get... Right, I, he said I already lost. Yeah, I mean, you got a point. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Here, here's a minute. Go. Go. Bryce. Oh, all right. Sorry, I thought he was still going. No, uh, okay. uh, Kate Beckinsale. Um, well, I mean... When we're thinking of Predator, obviously we think Arnold. We think of some big rip dude. But we want to let's see something different. We we don't want to see the remake look just like the original. We want something different. Let's let's get Kate Beckinsale in there. Let's flip the script like we've been doing with a lot of the remakes. Let's get a different role type in there. Let's get a female that's like we said an action star already. She's already proven her weight in that. Um, like and. And to link it into Arnold, like she was in the Total Recall remake, we can get our girl Jessica Biel in there to to kind of make that tie in even go further. And uh, I, you know, the, the she's got the accent, obviously not the the same accent, but there is an accent there. If we're doing, you know, it's a chopper. Okay. Um, Question. Um, so we're probably not going to go to. Seeing that he already lost, can we just get? Can we do what y'all did to me um, last time? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. It's up. Cut my head off. No, 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 no. You gotta do, cut your do, head off. Do animation. what you did with me and um. Wait. You want? You want Scott and I to go full hog and throw everything at you or at yes. us? Yes. Yes. Look. 
it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, I, let's, I let's cast it. Let's, there's, let's full there's cast There's going to be one. Me. There's going to be one problem I see right off the bat. Is this worth two points for me? You got two director questions. Which? So, no, no, I'm, I'm, so that, no, just follow my lead. Follow they're gonna, they're gonna conflict with each other. No, no, follow my lead. I got something for real. Ooh, I know what else we could throw in there. I, I'm throwing something. Okay, I got a question for you too. I'm oh, not gonna let you back. argue. I got a question. <laughs> not okay. Much work. No, no, no more clock. No, no blood. No clock. No blood. This, this is fun. We're just doing this for fun. Mm-hmm, Come mm-hmm. on. Points in the management. Okay, so here's my question. All right. I want you to see who will play. So let's just say in credit scene, um, the character who, the detective who played Danny Glover shows up. Who's going to play the detective from Her- Hereditary 2? Hmm. Hmm. Eric, you're first. <laughs> Donald Glover. Huh? Donald Where Glover. <laughs> That's literally what I was going to say. Literally what I was going to say. I mean, it's the correct answer. It's the correct answer. <laughs> well, yeah. They're not related. They are not related. Yeah, they're not related. The correct it's answer is that is, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, no. His cousin. Go, here's my Atlanta. answer. Let me I tell you the correct answer. Name. Okay. It's fucking Denzel Washington. Oh, he's mm. so old. <laughs> so old. <laughs> he is. I'm sorry. I love him. He's the best. Yeah, yeah, this is fun, yeah. All right, anybody else got a question? Caster Dylan. That's yes. that was my question. Yes. yes. What? You Caster kind of, Bryce Dylan. kind of already did a little bit, maybe. A, a little bit, yes. He did actually mention a name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said Jessica Biel. Would she be your right. Dylan? No. Wait, for Dylan? No. Yeah. Yes. Um. Because you said you were going to throw her in there, but you did not say as when Dylan. You're, when you're no. doing, I already, I already know who I'm going to cast, and it's going to be controversial, but I'm just going to tell you. Mac, you're not, you're not fighting. I know. But I'm telling <laughs> you what I want to do. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, okay. I have mine. Let's go with um, our boy from... Uh, Reading Rainbow. LeVar Burton? Yes. <laughs> As Dylan? Yes. With Kate Beckinsale? Hey. Hey, I like it. You heard, Burton. You heard it here first. No, no, we're doing this for clarity. We're making sure we are understanding what you're <laughs> going with. See, Burton. At, at, least, at least do Mika Burton. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. You heard it. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going with John David Washington, Denzel's son, uh, <laughs> who also was the main character in Black Klansman. I I, I, I told you it was gonna, mine's going to be controversial. I would have just got uh, a CGI. Uh, I would have got a CGI of uh, Carl Worley's <laughs> arm, and that's what's going to be Dylan. Just CGI Carl. <laughs> okay, at that point, you could have just had a CGI penis. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, That's yeah. That's not answer. Just be blurred out the entire film, right? <laughs> just a big sensor big block in front of it. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I lied. It would have been it would have been um John Claude Van Damme, but as naked. So a penis. Well, JCVD. <laughs> a little bit of that JCVD. All right. When you say it that way, that sounds like a disease. <laughs> Well, I say it that way okay, well. okay, okay. Next, <laughs> gotta put a Nazi spin on it. <laughs> Why? Just because my last name's Schumacher? God damn it! <laughs> Shit won't stop falling. Okay, what is this Nazi spin on the Predator movie? Or I'll, I'll make Am it I easier. Answering? You gotta oh. put a Schindler's List spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Am I first? Because I already got it. He took yeah. my answer last time. Okay. I'm going to take his answer this time. All right. Go ahead. Do we'll it. Turn, we're going to turn it into like uh, Return to Wolfenstein. <laughs> it's going to be Predator, but at Castle Wolfenstein. Wait, is 
Is Kate Beckinsale playing a Nazi? No. The Predator is a Nazi. Yeah. The Predator is a Nazi. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god! I love that you keep making aliens Nazis. I I appreciate this <laughs> because Why Hitler was going to invade. He was going to have a hoax invasion to try to intimidate the world into submission. He's got that base right. on the moon. I know what you're talking about. All right, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen ancient aliens. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's here's mine. Here's mine. So instead of a Schindler's List twist, I'm actually going to do a Black Klansman twist, where they actually take out the Predator halfway through the movie, and then more Predators start coming in. So Dylan has to then pretend to be a Predator over the Predator mask, and Black Klansman that the Predator everything's going all right on Earth, that he's hunting all these all these great uh great specimen, and he'll be and he'll be joining them soon to try to uh, send the Predators back, being doing a, a Black Klansman thing. Uh, but he's a he's a black predator. So okay, so you're so uh, Chris Hemsworth would be like doing the voice. No, 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 no. This is Dylan doing it, not not Dutch Dylan. Because okay. because I because I, right. I have I have I have Ron Stallworth from Black Klansman being Dylan. Fair, fair. Okay, and then right. and then what? Chris Hemsworth goes in as the body of the predator. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Sequel pitch. All right, sequel pitch, guys. Um, so your sequel is set with um set in um set in New Orleans, <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana. This is, this is really gonna you know fuck up the whole Nazi thing from the first. <laughs> no, <one>. no, no. <laughs> maybe it will. Maybe it won't. We don't know. <laughs> Nazis in New Orleans? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> well, they certainly would have a field day being there. Yeah, yeah. You did say well, hey. Um, so it's set in New Orleans, and um, I want you to pitch a sort of um, 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 Scarface version of Predator. Predator Two, but it's in New Orleans, and it's Scarface. Predator Two, but it's Scarface. From from the director, from the director of uh, of your worst director, from your worst director of the twenty ten. Yeah, from your worst director. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. and, and then and then I got one to follow up with that. Okay. So, you know. You know, you know, Chris Hemsworth and uh, Chris Hemsworth makes it to New Orleans. He's uh, he's still pretending to be a predator uh, with the, with the predator mask. So he they they go undercover because the predators have invaded New Orleans because it, it they feel like they just fit in. Everybody's too drunk for them to notice that they're there. So they go into a predator bar. He's pretending to be the predator. Uh, he's like, and it's like, well, you know, we don't know what these people. Uh, do to all the uh, what well, we are to all these people. We we, we uh, I feel like we're and he's like and then uh Chris Hemsworth was like, well you got we're we're all just sort of predators and then the the guy just said say that word again, <laughs> predators. Qu quick question, quick question. What accent is Chris Hemsworth doing? Oh, he's he's doing his natural Australian accent. <laughs> okay, so so uh, in in, in this is also in, in this Australia. timeline, Dutch is Australian. Okay. Austrian, Australian, same difference. Yeah, literally. Sure. Nobody picked a Dutchman. No, nobody picked a Dutchman. <laughs> well, well, the, it, it, he he's Dutch because he was a Dutchman living in England. That was then he's he's descended from a Dutchman that was living in England that was sent to Australia as part of the jailing system when he made Australia. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why his name is Dutch. <laughs> It all makes sense now. <laughs> it's a family name. So it's a family nickname. It's a family nickname because they weren't called anything else. Yes. <laughs> Dutchman. Dutchman. <laughs> Dutchman. Oh, God. Dutchman. All right, Bryce, beat that. Yes, beat that. Okay. I just like to say I'm glad so, nobody said Michael B. Jordan to play uh, New Dylan. I'm like I'm no, I was not. <laughs> I almost yeah, said I'm like you. no, I'm not. I'm not. He, he said Denzel Washington. I'm like wait, his son was black. It was Ron Stallworth and Black Sandman. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about Predator Two in New Orleans, right? Port New or yeah, Port New Orleans. <laughs> 
Directed by Fred Durst. Directed by Fred Durst. In your that, case, that, Fred Durst. That's the part. I was like, there's something else I'm missing there. Okay. Direct, <laughs> let me write. Directed by FD himself. <laughs> okay. Directed by Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Fred Dick. Predators Jones. all wear red caps. No, no, I, no items, Fox, only Fred Durst directed. So, all right. Scarface, too. That was the other thing, right? Yeah, Scarface. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm reading it all now. All right. So we got Scarface <laughs> in New Orleans, Predator 2, directed by Fred Durst. Typical oh. Mac question. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and there I'm are no I'm in the blanks right now in front of you. They're not these two, yeah. Yeah, I've already got that written down. That Not these already there. You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> Baked into the uh, DNA of the Predators. Uh, yeah. God damn it. All right. So, all right, Predator, the Predator is Scarface, dealing out of Louisiana, New Orleans. He's dealing the invisibility. He's got the invisibility drug. He's dealing it. He's behind Castle Wolfenstein, New Orleansstein. There's a, <laughs> he's, it's a, He's got the impenetrable fortress along with the invisibility. He's selling it to his crew. He's selling it to anyone outside the walls that want to pay that built his fucking Scarface Enterprise up. When he says, hello to my little friend, he's talking about all his invisible predator minions that are sniffing the glue. And then all of a sudden they pop out. Um, our girl, Kate Beckinsale, is going to be... There's going to be a a voodoo kind of vibe, a little Indiana Jones vibe to her. She's a little Tomb Raider. It's going to start mixing. She She's coming here to explore for some ancient voodoo relic, but ends up, turns out, guess what? The Nazis are in the way. They've got the fort built around it. Um, so, I mean, that, that you get the gist. We got the Nazis in New Orleans. Scarface is predator selling the selling the uh invisibility drugs to everyone kate beckinsale comes in for an ancient voodoo artifact and runs into the nazis gotta take him out got it tomb raider take it back to the mansion okay i, I love okay. i love how you said you said like one of the most insane pitches i've ever heard and they're like you guys get the gist <laughs> <laughs> See, see, I, I, what I personally would have done with that pitch, <laughs> since you're leaning more into the Scarface thing, start in New Orleans, but then have it go to Argentina, because uh, that's where all the Nazis actually are. Yes, Nazis Just, are known see, for being in Argentina. Oh, <laughs> now, yeah, now yeah. Got a I mean, if we're really actually, talking about it, it's actually true, Mist. The the the, and the Arnold Schwarzenegger's family is there. I mean, Predator is the Nazi. I mean, he's. Damn it! Are you Eric? Are you fucking trying Predator to? Predator is trying pretty to much Hitler. Commando, you motherfucker! Ooh, crossover. Well, hold on. So the only reason they're, they're... Dutch is Dutch in that movie, in my movie, is because it's either you're, she's leaving you in a Dutch oven by the end of it. Oh, wait, you wait, so she's <laughs> on you? Oh, yeah, just leaving you in a big old bomb. It's, it's like, what the fuck happened here? I can't breathe. <laughs> so, so wait, she gets into bed with her enemies, farts, and leaves them to die. No, that's. It, it's I a, love it. Her enemy is a predator. Term. Don't forget. No, it's her, a, it's enemy, a, her enemy is a Nazi predator. It's it's a term that's used for the way her crew moves and eradicates. Oh, it's a, it's like a special causes move, people to like flee, in, like yeah. in Mortal Kombat. They call it's her nickname, the Dutch. Oven. She's the Dutch oven. Oh, that's that's. Sad. Well, since we're talking about Nazis, ovens would be appropriate. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Except so for she her is a Nazi. A fart. <laughs> and she's not a Nazi in your pitch. <laughs> so okay, so take she's the, taking the name. Back. She's Dutch. She's yes, saying, I know she's take, Dutch. Take the show from the night. Take your Nick show from she's the She's reversing 90s the oven on the Nazis pitch. using their. Okay. Yeah. Or add a character from. Isn't their yourself. own yeah, weakness easy. against them? Their easy. own that weapon against them. Easy. Have a taste of your own medicine. Easy. So, here's how here's how we do this. So, doing the classic scene where you know they're covering each they're covering themselves in mud to evade the heat vision, mm -hmm. and uh, they they walk through 
they walk through and they come across this this old lady as they're walking through just happens to be there and she's like don't track mud in the library <laughs> 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 and, and or, ma- or imagine like... or imagine they're sitting there in that same scenario and they have no food and they, <laughs> they look over and start eating their own soap <laughs> oh, whatever just trying to find it again. <laughs> now add Dan Schneider to your pitch oh fuck <laughs> All right. so we get a nice no, close up no. shot of Chris Hemsworth putting mud on his feet but it's not really his feet. It's stunt double feet. <laughs> and, and then, and, and then there's this big promotional thing uh, as they go through. It's like, hey, everybody who wants to see this new Predator reboot, we need, we need help. Please show us pictures of your feet covered in mud. <laughs> A real thing Dan Schneider did he on did. Twitter. He right. did. Yeah. Oh, that's so oh, weird. Asking for kids to send him pe- pictures of yep. their feet. You can't do that, Dan Schneider. What are you doing, man? He did it. He did, he did it. it. <laughs> Bryce? What? Oh, he what? already said. What was the question? Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Okay. Add, add Dan Schneider to yours. Oh. Dan, add Dan Schneider to my movie. Um. Yeah, okay. It's definitely be some feet thing. Um. I, I, think, a, I think I think Dan Snyder. Yeah, he is a predator. Dan, yeah. Guys, guys well, he's right there. Dan Snyder, yeah, he would be the predator, but he would like to see the feet <laughs> see, turn invisible. For feet. You know what? He, he now likes I have to see the question. feet. Yeah, you you didn't like that question. He wants to see turn. He wants to slowly see the feet turn visible. <laughs> That's what get yeah. My, all right, here's my question because there I want to know about. Here's my question. So me have um, real of your feet turning New visible. Or- what what New Orleans based musician would you put in your film? And give us your scene. What? <laughs> oh, um, let's go with uh, let's go with our boy Little Wayne. Why not? I mean, if we're doing a remake, what are you gonna do? Fuck you, but oh, we in, in the movie? In the movie. Hey! I thought we were talking about music. Right. Music for the Fuck movie. Fuck you, Louis Armstrong music, for the music movie. all through all through the movie. Yeah. You'll be going with Fats Domino? Come on, guys. Fats <laughs> Domino. Does Fats or Pete count as that? Little Wayne. No, he, he just Little can't. Wayne would end up being the guy that's on top of the predator. Like he's the drug dealer on top of the predator. At the very end, it'd be like, oh yeah, man. <laughs> it would be Little Wayne there. Just for one five second little clip, just handing them getting busted or something. I don't know. Now, is it Little Wayne or Dave Chappelle is Little Wayne? (laughs) (laughs) All right, Eric, what's Louis Armstrong doing? Dude, it's just his music's everywhere. So oh yeah, I mean, he was yeah, pretty much a soundtrack of New, like New Orleans for a he, long he's, time. He's 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 in the movie like New York is a character. <laughs> so you're telling me he's playing the music as you're going down the street or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's every story. every it's like every corner, every, every time they walk to another corner, he's I, standing Mac, there playing the fucking Mac. Mac, I chose a I chose a person who died 14 years before Predator came out. Yeah, I, I mean, I was, yeah, I was trying to pick someone that was alive. I guess. Fair, fair. Birdman. Okay, here, here's here's what it, this might be the last one because we probably unless, like... unless unless we say yeah, let's wrap it up. Okay, no, mm-hmm. let's wrap it. All right. What is your pro your post credit stinger? Yeah, yeah, good stinger? one, good one. End it. What do you mean, post credit stinger? But it's like in a Marvel stinger. movie. The credits have run. No, like the credits roll. There's one more scene. One more okay. scene. I got you. I, I just never heard that term. Before. I got you. E- easy fucking peasy. So it's the end of the movie. Uh, they there's a, a CIA report dropped onto the desk of the Oval Office, uh, written written by uh, written by um, <laughs> written yeah uh, by uh, about the events of the first movie. And 
president picks it up. You see his hand. Camera turns. You know who it is. You know who's the president in this movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Jesse Ventura. <laughs> I love that. Does he do the predator handshake with the guy? Yes. Yes. yes How does this work? You won. <laughs> How does this work? It just works. It just works. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> so, so wait. So there are two duchess. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. He walks up to him and he's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Right. Duchess quiz. daughter, and, and then the universe collapses. On <laughs> no, no, they they do they do the predator handshake, and then <laughs> tackle the ghost of Chubbs. because they just made physical contact with the president. <laughs> just 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 tackled by the Secret Service, and that's the end of the stinger. <laughs> <laughs> You son of a ah, shit! You son of a bitch! <laughs> they do the thing, and then tackle by Secret Service, and then on the floor just looks at him. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Dutch will return in Predator Two. <laughs> I like that scene. I like that scene, but I'm I'm gonna do something similar. But when the handshake happens, or the president being introduced, it's E.T. Oh my god! <laughs> And they both and he's a Nazi. They, and, and yep, and they both get beamed up to fucking home. The, the president phone is home. a Nazi. Of course they're going home. home. Of course they're going home. They phone home. I love Predator both two, these endings home. so much. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason I like your guys' stingers more than the actual pitch. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, Mac. Who do you think won this one? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> E.T.'s got the glowing finger, too, when he does the oh, slap. No! <laughs> the one little glowing knob at the end of his swollen-ass hand. I, I, look, I really, really, really want to go with Eric because that stinger, because it's so funny. He grabs his hand and he tackles him. But I know Eric doesn't give a fuck who I pick because he's <laughs> one anyway. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. That stinger he gave was just funny as hell. He just gives the wagging finger. He's a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> you you son of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One point for ET, finally. Really <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Mustachio. Yeah, uh, I'm so confused. <laughs> There's no wrong oh, answer here. Me see, too. The, Scott and me I started this the last time, and we probably should regret it, but we don't. No, we, no, no this is a tradition now. Throw it all in a blender. And well, if, 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 if we know the person's going to win, we just throw it all in a blender and see what happens. And fuck, throw shit at the wall and have fun. I'm just, I'm just basing it on the stings because they were both so messed up. Both pitches are so confusing in my head. I can't focus. Um, so, I, 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 I wonder why our plots became so muddied. They're so muddled. It's me. Where are we? What year is it? I'm pretty I sure with... I forgot to mention Fred Durst in my <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to go with E.T. Sting ending, though. <laughs> Dang. Oh. All right, missed. <sighs> Who won? Okay, not only does the Sting, like, Bryce's Stinger get me, the fact that Dan Schneider is the Predator got me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Hey, dude, you want to see I want to see your feet. Okay. That seems so long ago now. So much has happened since then. <laughs> oh, it feels, man. It feels like a decade. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> All one long day, right? They, what? So you're telling me that let's Dan Schneider with those subtitles, he's not going to speak English? He's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm it's, just it's, yeah, no, he's going to talk. He only wants to just say, "I am your predator, your local predator." <laughs> no, so I, I live within 500 feet. No, I'm pitch, I'm picturing him with a wig on, like him okay. with a Dan Schneider wig on, and he's just doing that <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So the first time that they try to black Klansman the predator, they actually just call Dan Schneider, and he says, "You have the wrong number," and hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was Dan Schneider in the Amanda show. That would be a good one. Pretty solid. 
Good job. Good fight, everybody. That's Snap easy. for the battlers. Oh, I picked uh. Bryce because the thing that won me over. Dan Schneider mm -hmm. is the predator. Yeah. That just sums up the whole movie. Dan Schneider is the predator. <laughs> In fact, that's the title of your movie. Dan Schneider is the predator. The predator, yeah. And and I I am gonna also go with Bryce because he made E.T. a Nazi president, and that will always win in my book. <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, we both had an alien as the president. That is true. That is true. That is true. But <laughs> he literally says he put his finger up, and he's literally just doing the Nazi thing. So. He's, like, he's doing the Nazi salute with his finger. <laughs> I, I I was waiting for I was just waiting started. to put in the do we both have an alien as, as the president joke. The it's second just, he said ET, <laughs> he just does like a Nazi symbol with his glowing finger and it leaves a tracer in the the, the uh, air. No. <laughs> and then the movie ends. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Yeah. What the president's a Nazi? <laughs> By the way, under no circumstance do we support Nazis whatsoever. No, no, we do Even no, no, though no. for the past week we have done everything but condemn Nazis. Black Nazis. Nazis. <laughs> but, but, but we do we do approve more alien Nazis in movies. I think we, that's If cool. I make E.T. better, I might not fall asleep. Gilbert, <laughs> get on that. Yeah. They All tried. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eric, you won. Uh, yeah, sit down, congrats. fighters. Congratulations. I, I, I now, I now officially have the longest win streak in digital beatdown because I won the very first episode, and this is my second time being on the show. <laughs> this is my second time being on the show too. You beat me both times. Well, no, officially beat him down. I beat you, I beat you on Game of This is technically yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. He has be a winning streak. That ass. You know what? He does have a winning streak against me on game on uh, on this show. But Gamer Grudge, I still own your ass. I still. Yeah, yeah, Matt. How many times have you been uh, champ? Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt, I had a long middle favorite. finger. I would put it up. Et fuck you. <laughs> Et fuck you. <laughs> Et f you. <laughs> you picture Et like Et phone home. <laughs> I mean. I mean, if only he had that one as his glowing finger, you know. Right. That would be e funny as hell. <laughs> E.T. Sit and spin. I've I'm got right, one like, for you right finger. here. Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for okay. you. <laughs> All right. So, Eric, you got anything to plug? Uh, follow me on Twitter at Bunk Bunker. If I do something, I'll post about it. Cool, cool. Bryce, where can we find you? Um, pretty much anywhere as Big BS, uh, YouTube, Twitch, Xbox, Twitter, TikTok. Um, I'm also on the Next Level podcast, um, which is the official podcast for the Domain Gaming Pop Culture and Entertainment, which is another YouTube channel that I do content for there. So check out the Domain GPCE. Check out the Next Level Podcast and check out me, Big BS, wherever you can find me. Pistachio? Well, i am been pulling back from social media and the internet, going off the grid. So, Smart. But you can still find me on Instagram as littleblue.cro, little blue crow. And that's where I do things with yarn. No, she said mm. that's where you can find her. That does not mean that she'll respond. That, that's true. I, I don't open the messages. <laughs> Sorry, miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was personal. I get it. <laughs> hey, I'm your coworker. I can find you wherever. Yeah, you know where to find me. It's just I have to open. I have to open the social medias. Nice, uh, Miss. Where can uh, where can people find you? Somewhere. <laughs> Fair. Somewhere in the mist. Well, I am on like ninety yeah. percent of these somewhere shows. The just, just tune in. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably on it somewhere. <laughs> nice. All right, Mac. Oh, um, I'm Mac. Take us out. Go follow me at um. Get Mike. Get get close to your mic. I'm Mac. Um, come follow me at um. Tampa Buck fan eighty eight. Or follow us at GG Gang Fixers. If you follow us, 
well, you're probably going to have to go through waste process now. Um, so, um, we'll make sure we'll get you on there and let you get on there. On, on there. We're also going to be doing a, uh, we're also going to be doing a, uh, I think it's Instagram, right? Instagram. We're going to get on Instagram. We're working on that too. Uh, follow us on TikTok at GG Game Fixers, at, um, at the Game Fixers. Once again, we'll get you in there, um, and follow us there. Um, also Monday, Monday. Monday, um, Monday, 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 Monday. Bitch, Monday. 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 Actually, you're not wrong. Huh? <laughs> she wasn't wrong. It what? will be annihilation. Annihilation. Yeah. Big be annihilation. burning blue. The Gamer Grudge will be live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you stop by. There will be there will be tons of fun. I'll comment on that episode. We will have Chris versus Death Man for the chance to face Miss. This is going to be a great show. And Trink. And oh, Trink. good. Oh, yeah. Memory. And Trink. I keep forgetting about Trink. And Trink. It's going to be a good Oh, one. I'm going to tell you you said that. Everybody Uh-oh. show up. She's going to talk shit to me either way. I know her. Anyway. <laughs> Trink, you also, know you also forgot to mention I'm two time champion in a row. Yeah, you're two time in a row. Oh, yeah, you just something. Yeah, I mean, one, one, sure. one more, and you'll tie, and you'll tie my record. Uh oh. Right. Oh. Like, oh bigger yeah. Flexor. See, but here's the thing, that's my goal because yeah. I said I wanted to fight you. Oh. And you did. My very first show, I said I want to wow. fight you. Cage match. Cage match. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, Eric. Yes. That's why I want to fight you. Cage <laughs> match. Okay. I like I mean, all this. You, you, could, you, can, you can already tell between last last g- between Gamer Grudge and this, I've already shaken off a little bit more of the rust. I've I've done a little bit more of my trademark low blows this episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that oh, okay. first episode, I was like, this is not Eric. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you you were very subdued. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what happened, Eric? I was like, I got I you. you. I feel like I want to face. Oh, low head. blow, Eric. Huh? <laughs> all right. Yeah, I got I, you. I, I I spent at least three seasons being the villain of Gamer Grudge. Exactly. He's literally the Matt Damon of. The, well, there's a new that, sheriff this, in town. This is the Matt How's Damon that sound? of of GF One. <laughs> this is the Matt Damon of GF One. Sorry, we ran. I don't understand that reference. I, I mean, I mean, to be to be fair, I spent six seasons being the underdog, and then I was the villain. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> so I got like three more seasons, I guess. Right? You're not Cody Rhodes. <laughs> No, do do not do not look at my record uh up until they literally handed me a win. <laughs> I'm waiting for yeah, I'm waiting for the handed win. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, yeah <laughs> and, yeah. until they, one of these days. They, they well, I'll, crafted, I'll put my hours they crafted in. a gamer grudge. I know there's grudge. a log somewhere they said this guy must have it. They they craft they crafted a gamer grudge uh <laughs> that was specifically crafted for me to win. Uh, I won the first three rounds. They had me sit out the last round so we could go to PvP. This is when this is when PvP was mandatory. And then I got a bad first okay. PvP round. They're like, no, we're not gonna stop. Eric should not have lost this PvP. Nah, that was because <laughs> no, that's because Zach literally was arguing about yeah, Shadow Man. And I was like, no, 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 no. That oh, was sh- that that I was, I was talking about uh the first Pokemon fight. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't say good. Shadow Man. Don't give me. And, but, uh, yeah, but, but that was a fun. No, the the the, the situation <laughs> with Zach was like, no, you guys just didn't want Eric to win. <laughs> I should not have won that. <laughs> That's me. I'm you now. <laughs> no, you're. No, I, I feel like I feel like Bryce is gonna pull this bullshit on this podcast about finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, 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 do you have any more oh gamers? Gamers grudge is where I'm more. Mac, yeah, before we can, we can we can finish this after we stop the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we end this? Right? It's up for you, digital beat down. We'll see you next time. People. I don't like the AI. Yay! Bye. Digital, digital beat down. Yeah, we did our plug. Bye. 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 <laughs>